All right, we're here. Let's begin. <clears throat> hey, does anyone hear me? Is anyone here? Anyone ready to write some fucked up monsters together? I see some people in chat, some people I recognize. Hey there. <laughs> nice to see ya. So tonight is not a regular episode of Questers of Yalpalor. Um, Aw, I'm sorry to hear that, Sally, but at least you got something to do instead of the game that got cancelled. Um, remind me, which game was that? It's, it's, um, a masks? Mask game? Lapaz Walrus, hey, I haven't seen her for a while. Nice to see you. Uh, cool, cool. So there's some people in chat, very nice. We're gonna do some, uh, uh some writing together for Questers of Yelpalor, for the world of Yelpalor. Uh, I've been wanting to do this for a while and I didn't get the chance, I didn't have the time to do that. But now, because, um, thanks to, or because of, uh, Easter, we, um, we cancelled, uh, this week's session, this week's episode is not gonna happen. Instead of that, I decided I'm gonna do just that. I'm gonna connect. Uh, solo, I'm going to do a solo stream and I'm going to write down some uh, uh, monsters to use in the future because I want uh, uh, to involve you, the viewers, more and more in the game and to find more ways to um, uh, expand the, the world and make it more interesting. So I want to uh, focus on one specific area of uh, the world today. And this is a place that I'm very curious about because I, even though it appeared on one of the episodes, I never got to experience it because it was in the one episode I wasn't in. It was one week, I was a little bit sick, and uh, Trent, who's one of the players, ran a one-shot in the world with the same characters who were um, in another area of Yalpal or a completely other area. It was like before the the canon began it was before the first episode uh, uh when when this um adventure uh, happened where it uh, took place and um it was uh it was very interesting because he described a desert it was a desert and then in this desert there were um some creatures and some weird things happening um and there was a very curious thing happening when he described walking through the desert uh, the days are extremely hot and the nights are extremely cold, which is like most deserts. But then they it switched from day to night very, very rapidly. When you walk in this desert, uh, apparently you're either you're walking, your your sense of time is disrupted or sense of distance, or actually the days and nights are very, very short. So you don't experience the passage of time and your walking speed is different and the distances uh, before you reach your goal are all wobbly and weird. And you can't really expect what's going to happen. It can be day, and then a minute after, uh, it's going to be night. And you're going to go from sweating to freezing in the uh, cold air of the night. So that, to me, was really very interesting. And I wanted to explore that. And I wanted to write some uh, monsters, some interesting things that will happen if you are in this kind of area of the world. And I thought, uh, if now I know this area of Yalpalor, the kingdom of Yalpalor, I know it exists. Uh, maybe the characters can go back there one day and have some more adventures. And I decided, uh, yeah, let's let's fill it up. Let's populate this area with some cool, interesting monsters, and let's write them together. So the rules of the game tonight, the rules of the the the, the writing session we're gonna have is that uh, you are going to suggest some monsters. Uh, we will together fill them up with cool details, uh, and we'll either. Uh, have some uh, votes if there are competing ideas, or we'll we'll just we'll just create a a, a combination of different ideas of creatures and monsters uh, uh, out there in the desert. Uh, I have some prompts to start with. I'll start you off with some prompts that are either um, certain aesthetics, certain animals or creatures or stuff that I want to start from, uh, and then uh, I want uh, we will just add more and more ideas. Some of these ideas, some of these things I'm gonna ask you to add are the abilities of the monster, how the monster performs in a fight or in an adventure, if it's like an adversary or an ally of the characters, what kind of abilities does it have to either help them or hinder them or fight them. And then we'll create a stat block and I will draw the monster. I will do uh, an art uh, piece of each of these monsters, these creatures we create which as uh, we've seen in previous games in the past, works pretty well. I really like drawing stuff on Roll20. It's a very 
it, it's a, a platform, a graphics platform that really caters to my specific abilities and skill set. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely it'll happen. It'll still behave. It'll, it'll definitely happen for each of these monsters that we create together. So, um, yeah, we'll do that. And then, um, uh, and I, th I think we'll be, we'll start right now. So again, uh, to remind everyone of what we want to do, I'm going to write some stuff down and also it's going to be for the benefit of people who join maybe, uh, a little later on. Here we are. Uh, with the blank canvas that we're going to start filling out um, right away, I want to make sure that we have some ground rules set up. Uh, so these rules, let me let me write down uh, uh, these rules. Um, well, you know what? Let's call them guidelines. Guidelines. Ever since Pirates of the Caribbean, I prefer guidelines to rules. Uh, so um, first guideline, uh, we're writing monsters for uh, a desert area in this desert day changes into night very rapidly uh, weather um, uh, heat and cold temperatures are uh, extremely uh, deviant, uh, so it, it gets very hot and very cold, uh, and um, um, uh, divergent, I should say, divergent, deviant is something else. They could be deviant as well. Um, and um, uh, when traveling through the desert uh it's hard to gauge the di distances walking speed and time and passage of time okay so th that's the area that we're going to write monsters for uh second guideline um well, um, everything goes the world of Yalpalor can and does include um, elements of many other genres and settings. So don't feel very, even though it's the, the baseline is a reference to high fantasy. Uh, don't feel limited by that. You can write things that look very different. Um, however, another guideline, um, variety um, variety is good. Make it make it weird, um, funny, eclectic. Uh, even nonsensical. However, stay away from wacky randomness. Okay? Make it weird, but don't make it random. We don't just don't want uh, every monster to end up a pile of random attributes just mashed together uh, with no sense. So there are things that definitely can have... Uh, uh, oh, puns. Puns are really welcome. I'm, I'm actually going to make this a guideline. Puns are more than welcome. Um, mm -mm, so, uh, exclamation mark. Ooh, the cat is here. Hello, cat. Um, so, um, rules for magic. There aren't really rules for magic. Uh, right now, what we know about magic in the world of Yalpalor is only uh, what we know about certain specific creatures and also about like users of magic. Wizards uh, are divided into many, many, many schools. So one of the PCs, for example, is a bubble mancer. He does bubble magic, and uh, that's one of the heroes, uh, one of the four PCs of, of the game. Um, so we also know that there's uh, divination magic, there's honey magic, uh, there's uh, um, uh, arithmetic, which is number magic, magic with math and numbers, um, and mathematical equations. So there's lots and lots of different schools of magic. So if you have someone who learned how to do spells, uh, one of these monsters who decided they're actually like a wizard. They can be one of these kinds of magicians, and we can we can invent many other magician kinds of magic schools of magic that we want. 
Uh, but there's no general rules for magic except for that. Really, anything goes. Um, time shifting a hot tub time machine. <laughs> sure. Uh, we're yeah, maybe there is a hot tub time machine. Definitely. A learned ability, a form of national or knowledge. It can be, but also it also can be a natural ability. And I'm and I'm guessing lots of the monsters roaming around in the world can be just like naturally magical and have magical abilities that they didn't learn. It's just like something that it's in their blood, it's in their body, it's part of the species that they are. So just go wherever you want. You can have any kind of magic you want that's innate uh, and natural to the to the animal uh, or the the species or the person. Um, um, because really, uh, generally in Yalpa lore, anything goes. Uh, and that's another guideline. Um, uh, it's, I mean, there's no rules for magic, so I'm not going to add that as a guideline, because really, uh, you can imagine any kind of, uh, any kind of, uh, yeah. So the, the important metaphysical aspect that, that is, is important to keep in mind is the desert with, the, the fact that it's a desert, and the fact that there is some play there with passage of time and distances uh and the extreme temperatures that's that's if you want to draw inspiration from some existing um existing uh metaphysics then yes a land of pure imagination is pretty correct for all of yalpalor i will remind you you probably most of you haven't heard me say it uh because i haven't i don't know if i've ever mentioned it actually on the air to you i said it to the players multiple times and to uh, uh in other places where i wrote about the game but here I might have never have said that one of the sources of inspiration is Adventure Time, the TV show. Uh, one of the best TV shows ever, in my opinion. Uh, and uh, part of what I'm... Uh, the inspiration that I'm drawing from Adventure Time is the fact that really stuff that seems like it doesn't have a place will have a place later on. Stuff that seems like it's coming from a different genre suddenly can fit in this world and will find an explanation of, of, of like why are they here, what are they doing in the world, We'll just find the explanation later on. We just trust ourselves to be able to improvise or, or write or make up something as we go along. The important thing is that we do whatever is cool right now and what feels like it's it's nice and cool and action uh, filled and dramatic to us at this instant. This is more important um, than uh, writing an explanation to anything in advance. Uh, so this is part of the inspiration for the world, and that means really you can go in many, many different directions. Um, something else I wanted to, know, to to write is hooks and uh, uh, what else, how else can I describe it? Trailing edges are uh, very welcome, meaning uh, uh, ways uh, to write more details about these monsters later okay so you don't you can you can hint you can uh, write in some hints uh, that are unexplained right now into some of these monsters some things that you think could be cool uh, uh, if they remain a mystery right now oh the cat is clicking the <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. uh, the cat is uh, um, stepping on the keyboard and typing uh, for me Thank you very much, cat. Maybe the cat can be a prompt, can create a prompt. If uh, it types for long enough, probably it will make up some intelligible words and be uh, uh, some words, and it'll be a prompt for the um, um, uh, for for some monsters. Uh, so, yeah. So uh, these trailing edges. Not everything about a monster has to be completely explained right now. In fact, it's nice if there are some things that are yet unexplained. Maybe it feels like they don't make sense. Maybe it's like a mystery about these creatures, these monsters or, or people or species. Uh, and maybe uh, uh, later on, a GM such as myself or one of you who wants to take these ideas and run them uh, in your game, uh, you want to write it, the explanation, into your game later on. Or maybe your players want to investigate that and uh, uh, make some uh, theories up about why a monster behaves like it does or why, why it looks like it does. Uh, look at that. Look at this feisty cat. Look at this feisty cat. <laughs> Hello, cat. All right. This cat is going away. Thank you, cat. Goodbye. All right. Um, so, yeah, these are the guidelines. No rules, but guidelines. Caracal who hunts special rat-like beings. <laughs> that works. That could work. Um, so, yeah, let's start. Let's start. Oh, it all. I need to change the settings here for a second. 
<laughs> grid. Uh, I guess no grid at all then. Because then everything else is going to just stick to the grid and I don't want that. No, save set. No grid. We're not letting ourselves be, be, be limited by the metric system, by the world's by the, the, the world's fascination with boxes and limits and definitions. No, not at all. Um, all right, cool. So yeah, let's start. Let's start. I think um, Caracal that has special rat-like beings, the rat has pricey fur. But rat-like creatures hunt everything. Hunts nothing else, but the rat-like creature hunts everything. So there's also two creatures. Also two creatures already. Caracals are trained. That sounds nice. The rat swarms. The rat swarm will eat humans and crops. Oh, cool. So, what do we start with? The rat or the uh, or the caracal? Caracal is with a C, I think. It's spelled with a C, isn't it? Caracal C. Yep, caracal is with two C's, but we can uh, spell it with a K if we want to. Uh, I don't know why I even bothered googling. We can just spell anything we want to any way we want to. So, what do we start with? The uh, the rats. I think we'll start with the rats. Uh, then we'll move up the food chain to what to what is uh what is uh oh hi darth buckman hello hey thanks for following me a couple of days ago you followed me off the air so i wasn't uh able to think you uh alive uh but thank you for following the channel so uh yeah we're, we're gonna write down some rat monsters now it's gonna be a rat and it moves around in swarms so in many uh uh of these games these dungeons and dragons like systems there's like a concept of a swarm of animals uh, you're facing a swarm of rats or hornets or centipedes or whatever it is, and uh, uh, each one of them is very small and it's not really significant. It can't do any damage or do anything significant in the world, but a swarm of them is significant, and then you can either fight it or uh, uh, um, you can uh, have some trouble with it. You need to, to drive it away to, from some places, like a quest you have to do, uh, and a swarm can do quite a bit of damage or, or do some significant things. So let's start with the first monster. Uh, it's gonna be a rat, um, rat-like creature. Uh, I think the first thing we need to know about this rat-like creature is a description, a physical description. So tell me, what does this rat-like creature look like? It's basically, it's, we're basing this off of a rat, but I want it to have some more features. So physical description, let's start with that. What is the physical description of the rat? We already know that they move around in big, uh, big uh, um, uh, swarms, and they also um, uh, are hunted by the caracal, and they eat everything. Oh yeah, and sit still behave, you're right. We know already they have shiny, luxur luxurious fur. So shiny, luxurious fur, that's awesome, that's amazing. Okay, so yeah, shiny luxurious fur, that's the first uh, um, um, uh, feature that they have. What are other physical features do they have? Physical descriptions for these rats. Pretty expensive, right? We said that actually they, they can be harvested, they can be hunted for the fur. Furrets, they use fur to, get, to gather moisture. Ooh, nice. So that actually goes into abilities, abilities. Um, fur gathers moisture. Noisy? Oh, so what kind of noise do they make? If they make a noise, what is the noise that they make? You can't uh, make the noise in chat, I guess, but you can describe it. What does it sound like? Chirp that is somewhat like laughter. Oh, chirp that is somewhat like laughter. Nice. I like that. It's uh, pretty, uh, pretty creepy. Pretty, uh, pretty ominous. Uh, chirp sounds kind of like laughter. Nice. Okay. Okay. Very nice. That's two points of description, and it already kind of seems different than a rat. What I was gonna say. Oh, wow. Okay. Impressive. So that means it's a very good idea then in that case. So um, uh, Yeah, fur gathers moisture. Uh, let's now move into uh, so there are a swarm, right? So um, Abilities, I, I, it's not under abilities. It's gonna be under like general details uh, move in a swarm uh, These creatures move in a swarm 
uh, swarms and can eat anything. So I'll also write it down in abilities. Fur gather moisture eats eats anything. And that can be a pest. That means that like a quest for players can be get rid of the rats. Get rid of the rat-like creatures that are infesting this area. You need to find a way to get rid of them and maybe they like... Two sets of teeth. One is rat-like and another is more predatory and is hidden when they are not in swarm mode. Hidden when they're not in swarm mode. Wow. Uh, okay, so two sets of teeth. <laughs> uh, it's in description. Two sets of teeth when in a swarm the predatory predatory set uh, is uh, uh, used. So uh, that's cool. Uh, also, long tails for balance as they run and they can move very quickly. Okay, so move very quickly, balancing on their, uh, balancing not on, with their tails. Balancing on their tails also quite nice. Kina boy, hey, we're just writing the first creature. You can see the guidelines above. There's some guidelines to what we're doing. Uh, um, uh, so uh, read them up. We're writing creatures that belong in a desert right now, in a, in a desert in Yalpalor, in the world of Yalpalor, where the usual Monday game uh, takes place, Questers of Yalpalor. So there's an area of the desert. It has some weird features. It's, it's in the number uh, guideline number one up above, so you can read about it there. Um, and then there's uh, uh, there's already a first creature being written, the rat creatures. Can they climb, or do they only eat things and ground level? No, they can climb. They can sw They can get anywhere. Can get anywhere. Um, I think it's cooler if they can get anywhere, right? Uh, instead of, by the way, instead of asking questions, you can just decide. You can just decide. You can just say no. They they can't climb though, or yeah, they can climb and they can get anywhere. But if you ask, I might just go ahead and answer. Uh, so this is pretty cool. Uh, how about an ability that can be used in a fight? So moving quickly uh, is very useful in a fight, but I think bigger and stronger and they can climb better as individuals. Um, climb better as individuals and swarm, they turn bigger and stronger. I like the fact that they're, they're stronger as a swarm. Um, so if you're in a swarm, maybe they can cr something is created. Uh, tell me about it. What, what happens when they gather in a swarm? We also we already know that they grow sharper teeth. They reveal the other set of teeth, which is sharper than the normal one. But what happens that is even more special, that's even more visible and cool when they become a swarm? Hive mind, that's cool. Underground attack and an, is a nice battle maneuver. Underground attack, they can attack, they can burrow anywhere, including burrowing and climbing okay nice so they can burrow and they climb as well electric charge Ooh, electric charge that kind of fits well with a shiny luxurious fur right they rub against each other and they create an electrostatic charge and then they can discharge it on their uh enemies and the on stuff that they want to hunt they can stun animals and uh hunters that are trying to hunt them yeah nice okay very good so this is a very important ability um when in a swarm uh <laughs> their fur they uh rub their fur against one another and create an electric charge which they can discharge uh, against uh, prey and enemies so that is throw enemies to conduct they throw it on enemies to conduct their charge i'm not sure about poor questers yeah <laughs> having the feeling they won't like those creations when they actually meet them in the game um salt and water they use salt and the water they gather to con to conduct their oh they get they get the enemies wet to conduct their charge that's okay um, often wet the water conducts the electricity 
Nice, I like it, I like it. Okay, so we know enough about the, their uh, abilities, the way that they hunt. They can get anywhere, and then they get in a swarm. And they, when they get in a swarm, they can uh, create a magnetic charge, uh, and they can uh, uh, stun enemies uh, and prey animals uh, when they want to hunt them. That's lots of very good ideas about the abilities. It's also going to give us a lot of good ideas about abilities in a fight, when you fight them. So you need to be... Uh, um, you need to be aware of any any wet like patches on the ground, right? Because they might leave some puddles of water that are highly conductive to electricity, and if you st step in, step in them, you get electrified even worse, right? So that's stuff that we can write later when we write the um, the game stats for the creatures. <laughs> uh, no, we're not. We're not doing any. It's not an existing IP. It doesn't have anything to do with any existing IP. A rat that conducts electricity. Nope, that's a whole, that's an entirely. <laughs> no, 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 that's our, that's an original idea from us for tonight. Things are tough. They will tend to swarm and seek new areas and grow. When things are good, they will be less dangerous. Things are tough. Okay, okay. So we can also write that down in maybe behavior. We can do behavior. Uh, when times are rough, they hunt in swarms. Nice. Earlier, the IP is RP. Locusts actually do that in real life. Do what? Oh, when times are rough, they get in swarms and they, yeah. Okay, cool. Nice. So we have a lot of stuff now. Um, we need to realize, uh, to decide, like, what the game stats are. Uh, I'll do uh, some of it and I'll, I'll ask for some suggestions there uh, and you can tell me if I've missed anything when I write down the, the statistics, the numbers of the animal. Um, also, I want to know what the name of the creature is. That's one of the last thing we're going to do with any of these monsters. We're going to decide what their name is, the name of the creature. Uh, that is going to be your job. I'll remind you of guideline number four. Puns are more than welcome. So you can go ahead and decide on any name that you want, any name at all. Burrits. <laughs> the name of the desert. The desert doesn't have a name yet. We can name the desert as well. You can name the desert as well. The desert doesn't. It hasn't been named in the game yet. Burrits was also already uh, already suggested before. Burrits is nice. So let's uh, let's call them Burrits. Burrits. Um, ferrets move in swarms and can eat anything. Shiny, luxurious fur. Uh, so they're like ferrets. Let's let's say that they're actually like ferrets. It means that they're long. They're elongated, uh, long, uh, long bodies, pointy noses. Sound very cute until they uh, shock you with electricity. Nice, very nice. This is something about heat or salt. Furret is a Pokemon name? No, 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 no. Then we're not going to do that if it's a Pokemon name. The famous docile desert rat and its magnificent fur, but in, in, the, in a pack it is the... It is. Okay, so no, it's not Furrets. It's not Furrets. <laughs> I refuse. I refuse to tread on existing IP of a company that can sue me. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. So uh, I need new names. A new, another name for the creature. Furret is a Pokemon. I'm gonna Google it. Probably very cute, right? Furret. It is cute. It is cute. A normal type Pokemon introduced in Generation Two. It is the evolved form of Centret. Okay. Well, very, very adorable. Uh, but no, these are not Furrets. These are something else's. So, uh, stats. I'm gonna start with the stats, Gen Two. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. I'm not that well versed in Pokemon, or at all, actually. Um, so the stats, uh, they're gonna be very small and weak individually. So um, they have uh, like only um, uh, uh, two hit points when they're alone, uh, and uh, uh, Attacks are practically non-existent when they're alone. Uh, and then there's swarm stats. Um, language that speakers talk. I don't think we've established that either. There's like a common language around Yelpalor, uh, which is a language that most creatures, most people are gonna be uh, 
temperate or tropical tropical desert no I, I don't know what that even means it's just a desert <laughs> um what is the difference between a temperate and tropical desert sally you're uh you're uh, asking questions nobody has yet uh, uh written the answers to so you can you can decide instead of asking questions you just sahara or gobi like uh i think it's more gobi desert right I mean, they're, they're, um, yeah, I think, I don't know, I don't know, I really don't know. Uh, I don't think it matters right now, actually. I don't think it matters what exactly the type of uh, uh, climate this desert is. I don't, I don't want to get into it. Shamo Desert? Why Shamo? What is that? Where does that come from? Which uh, existing uh, IP are you ripping off now? <laughs> okay. So swarm stats, desert in Chinese. Oh, desert in Chinese. Nice. Okay. So, uh, Shamo desert. Let's write that here. Oh, here for the desert for the for a desert area for the Shamo desert. Nice. <clears throat> uh, very good. Very good. Uh, this is now. Okay, cool. Uh, swarm stats, I'm going to uh, write that they have uh, one, two, eight hit dice. So a hit die is like a measure of the general power of a creature. Uh, because it's a swarm, it can have like a different number of, ra of, of these rats inside it. Shorva Gazar, according to Google, is Mongolian for salty place. Shorva Gazar. Oh my god, Shorva Gazar. Shorats. <laughs> nice. So wait, wait, we're changing the name to, oh god, Shorva Gazar. Good. Nice. I like that name. So these are shore rats, shore rats, shore rats. This is going to be the name until somebody comes up with a better idea. And I think that's actually a pretty good idea uh, already. So one to eight hit dice means that it can be either a very uh, basic weak monster. One hit die is like the, mean, the the minimum number, the minimal number of hit dice a monster can have. Uh, the most, uh, uh, eight is like a lot. 10 hit dice is epic. It's a huge epic thing. I don't think it makes sense that a swarm of shore rats is gonna reach 10 hit dice, but it can be a huge swarm. So let's say it's one to, let's say it's one to six hit dice. It can be a very large monster. Uh, for comparison, our uh, PCs, which are very capable, uh, very strong heroes already, are level four, which means they all have four hit dice. They have a bit more variety in their abilities. They're more capable we're not in fifth edition we're playing macchiato monsters which is an old school system uh it's like a very simplified version of dungeons and dragons uh that kind of draws some inspiration from old old uh D, &D uh like first and second edition D, D from the 80s um yeah so there's a lot of these old school systems i just chose one that i like because it has a lot of free form uh, magic and ability use and cool abilities that all the characters can have so it's just one that i like especially but um, uh, it really is very similar to a lot of old school D&D in which the hit dice are the measure of the power of a creature. So one to six hit dice means it can be a small swarm or just a few of these rats or a six hit dice swarm, which is a lot of rats. And the hit dice, the first thing it uh, determines, the most important thing it determines is how many hit points does the creature have. Uh, the more hit dice it has, the more hit points it's going to have. And that means the harder it's going to be to uh, uh to bring these creatures down it's going to be harder and harder to destroy them the more hit dice they have because you're going to have to attack them more um nice oh i like some of the ideas but i'm going to write down some of the attacks uh first so bite bite is going to be um uh some damage uh uh and this is going to be a, a bite attack attacks bite uh, 1d4 uh, per hit die 
Okay, so for every hit die that they possess, they have one. They do one d4 damage, which means if you meet a medium-sized swarm, like a pretty, a pretty decently sized one, like three or four hit dice, you're gonna get three or four d4 damage when they bite you. Uh, and then you can also be electrocuted. Uh, electricity uh, strike, uh, and that is gonna be uh, more damage. Uh, which I think is it needs to be a lot of damage, like 1d8 per hit die, right? So it's 1d8, actually more, let's do it more, 1d10 uh, per hit die, uh, but it is only once per fight, right? Because once per, or let's say once per scene, right? Because uh, they come with an electric charge built in that they manage to build up over time, and then they hit you with it, uh, they try. They try to stun you or, or bring you down or kill you, uh, but they can't do it again because they need to create more of the electricity with their uh, luxurious spur. Uh, they can try electrocuting with their tail. Um, mm -mm. Cutting off tails will hurt their hurt their sense of balance and making them feel safe will dissolve the swarm. Hurt their sense of balance and making them feel safe. So how do you do that? How do you? Um, Try to look through their tail. Yeah, it takes time to charge. It's in their fur though. Yeah, let's not mix different things together. The tail is for balancing. I don't want to create a lot of attacks for every monster. We can just add on more and more details and then it'll feel like they can do anything. They can hit with their tails. They can balance with their tails. They can jump with their tails. They can hit with electricity. They can move with their feet. It's going to be too many things. Um, but we, we do need to write fast movement. We did say that they have fast movement uh, as long as they have their tails. Um, uh, and they have two attacks. One of them is like a reliable attack and it does a bit of uh, how to feel safe with some smells and special magic. Um, if you make them feel safe, you will dissolve the swarm. I think it's a good idea, but we don't need to write that into the monster. We don't need to write that in. You can just try to, um, you can try to salt. Oh, they like salt. Uh, yeah. Let's write that down in, this, in abilities. No, not abilities. Behavior. They hunt in swarms. Uh, seek out and eat salt. So that's what they like eating. So that's something players can discover, right? That's something the characters can research, and then the players discover this piece of information. They like to eat salty things. They like to have. They have a very salty diet because they need to um, create salty. Oh, they create the salty puddles. We said right. They 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 leave wet puddles with salty water to conduct their electricity. Um, so we need to actually write down that they also have uh, the ability to lay traps, right? They can lay traps. So let's write down uh, puddle traps, uh, puddle traps. Uh, so if you step in one of these traps, you need to roll a dexterity save um, or or uh, get hit. Um, so they have these electricity strikes only once per, per scene, right? Only once per fight are they gonna be able to do that. Um, mm -mm -mm. And for hit. So what happens if you step in one of these pools? They all, if they already use their electricity strike, uh, what do the puddles do, the, the salty water uh, puddles? Uh, mm, the absorb is better. Oh yeah, they absorb water at night. Behavior. Um, absorb water in the cold night. Uh, in the cold night air. They absorb water from the cold night air. Cool, nice. So, uh, what do the puddle traps do? That's the last thing I think we're missing. The last thing we're missing here is what do the puddle traps do if you accidentally step in one of them do you get electrified? Because it doesn't make sense. The, the electricity doesn't stay in the water, right? Poisonous. Uh, why would they be poisonous? What, um, what's the use of the poison for them? I wonder. Not table salt. <laughs> okay. It's highly concentrated. Look at easily, maybe. Yeah, it's, a, <laughs> it's assault. Oh, God. No. No. I mean, yes, we said puns are welcome, right? So it's a, it's assault. Maybe it can be, it can be included somehow in the description of the creature. 
electrocuted more easily. Um, mm, okay. Uh, so, puddle traps. If you stand in one, you get hit for uh, a lot more damage. 2d8 per hit die instead. Okay, so that's, that's I think that's what I, I want these puddles to do. When you meet these creatures, if you stand in salty water, which they uh, leave behind, pack out of the, the smell of the salt. Oh, nice. They also can smell salt from afar. So there's, it's several things here. There's several things that we added. So if you stand in one of these puddles, if you stand in one, you get hit for 2d8 per uh, hit die uh, by the electricity attack, right? Instead of 1d10, it becomes 2d8 per hit die, which is a lot of damage. Um, assault rats. <laughs> oh my god, assault rats. It's true. It's true. They should be named assault rats. Uh, 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 assault rats. Assault rats. Very good. Very, very good. Thank, thank you very much, Sally. You've really tied the whole thing together with a ribbon. I think now we have a good idea. Uh, and then uh, we, have, uh, we have a good creature. It's a pretty formidable enemy. You know that when you meet them, uh, you will have uh, uh, a first, like, very powerful attack at first. You need to keep them either uh, at, a, at a safe distance or somehow make them discharge the electricity uh, in a harmless way somehow. Maybe... Um, intentionally put the toughest, you know, tank in the front so that they don't, uh, they, they attack them with the most powerful attack and then only ev any, everyone else can, uh, can come forward and uh, join the fight. Uh, there's like some strategy involved and I like that. I like the fact that there's, uh, there's more than one way to deal with these creatures and you, you can't just go in and let them do whatever they want. Um, so that's cool. Assault, assault rats. I love it. Okay, so now art. Now, your favorite part. <laughs> your favorite part of the evening. I'm gonna draw these creatures, assault rats. Um, I need to. I need to actually draw them now. I have gotten myself into this, uh, and I'm gonna do what I promised. So let's. Uh, they're probably brownish, right? They're probably brownish. Um, uh, let's 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 draw this as a, a body. <laughs> This is a, a body, right? Uh, so they're not really ferrets. They're not ferrets. They're rats, and that's uh, that's their their head, um, their head, and then there's some whiskers. I'm gonna draw in a second. Um, what do what do rat feet look like? Oh. Ah, no. Change the color back to, to black. Rat feet. So, like, rat feet has, will have some, like, fingers. It looks like bird feet, the way I'm drawing it. And there's... Feet. <laughs> That's their feet. <laughs> I'm spending way too much time on the feet. Long pointy snout, I recall. That's right. It should be longer and pointier. Longer and pointier. Make sure we do it properly. Let's just make sure we do it properly because there were very specific descriptions. Yep, very long and very pointy. As alt right rats. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, colorful points in fur. Colorful points in the fur. Okay, but uh, the fur needs to be long and luxurious. Let's make sure we draw that. Long and luxurious fur. So it needs to be very furry. Long, long luxurious fur. Very furry rats. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, now they have... 
Red blood filled points to gain water directly and cool down. Uh, show some sparks at the end of the fur. Yeah, sparks I believe in. Sparks I think are a good idea. But before sparks, I'm going to draw a tail. It's going to be a tail because it needs to be quite long, quite long and uh, thick to be able to, uh, to provide some balance, right? The tail should be like pinkish because rats have pink tails, I think. That's what cartoons taught me at least. Okay, nice tail. Balancing tail, of course. Yes, very, very uh, uh, important. Uh, let's draw some whiskers. Some whiskers. They're going to be gray, gray whiskers. These are whiskers. The tails have no fur. Yeah, it's just pink skin. I, I, I meant it to be like a fill. There's no fill tool in Roll20, so I just have to draw. Just it's like... Um, uh, skin is pink. Either rat should be longer. Either rat should be longer or the legs, uh, hind legs. Yeah, let's draw longer legs. You're right. You're right. Longer legs is it's true. It needs to be. I need to be able to like walk, to walk to to jump, and climb. Yeah, that's that's a nice, impressive, impressive leg. And the, the front legs may be a little more significant as well, although it does, don't have to be much more. Eyes, yes, eyes are important. Let's do one eye because we only see one. We, we see it like in profile. And then there's the sparks. Sparks at the edge of the fur. How do we do sparks? There's maybe shapes. We can draw shapes maybe. Rectangle, circle, no, can only do rectangle and ellipses. That's the only shapes we can do are rectangles and ellipses, and that's not a rectangle or ellipse. Uh, so we need to do is like, oh, whoops, change it back to black again for no reason. Okay, so this is gonna be uh, some some sparks, some sparks flying off, flying out. Is this too much? <laughs> is this too many sparks? <laughs> Uh, I don't care. That's gonna be that's the creature. That's the creature. These are the assault rats. This is it. Feast your eyes upon the assault rat. I think I think this whole thing needs to be shrunken a little bit because it's a rat. Right? It's a rat. It's it's not a now we'll move it. Move it to here. These are the assault rats. Very nice. Very nice. Oh, okay. So uh, we have one monster. We we wrote one monster. That's cool. Uh, let's do some more. Let's do some more monsters. Uh, I want to do... Uh, we can do the Caracal with a K. Uh, we'll probably find a different name for it as well. Caracal. Uh, that's a temporary name. Or we can do something else. Another monster. Um, uh, but, um, uh, let's have a little vote. Do you think you can have cool ideas for the cat? The only animal that hunts these mice, these rats, uh, or do you want to move on to something else? It's a yes, no vote. Do we do the caracal or no? A bird is a cool suggestion. Yeah, a bird is a cool suggestion. So Sally is voting to not do the caracal, I understand. Your vote is to not do the caracal because you want to move on to do some bird. How about to still behave, China boy? China boy, sorry. <laughs> Someone else may be watching us. Where's Walrus? Slide past Walrus. You were around just a second ago. A sandworm. Wow. A sandworm is cool. A classic. A fantasy sci-fi classic for desert. And with anything, just giving suggestions because we're not ripping off other IPs. Yes, that's right. A sandworm, which is not from any other IP or a, a bunch of other IPs, right? We're not. Let's, if we rip off an IP, let's rip off all of them. Let's rip off all the fantasy deserts and do a sandworm. Um, mm, mm, any other suggestions? You have your own ideas, which is very cool. I can just go with any of your ideas. A beetle is nice. So we had a beetle as an NPC in that game. Trent wrote an NPC which was a beetle, and um, there was 
sandworm which is actually made of sand. I like that. So it was a dung beetle. It was a dung beetle. Uh, Trent wrote a dung beetle as the um, the quest giver, the, the NPC who gave them the quest. It was a dung beetle, and they met it uh, while it was just uh, rolling a huge dung ball through the desert, like a person size, like a person height dung ball. It was a huge thing. They just saw it ride towards them, roll towards them on the desert floor. And eventually when it arrived, they saw like a tiny beetle uh, standing on top of the of the dung ball. So we're going to write the beetle and we're going to write the sandworm. I like both of these ideas. So there's going to be a sandworm, which is actually a worm made of sand. And there's going to be a dung beetle because we've already seen one. So now we have to know what their abilities and their statistics are. Um, let's start with the beetle. Okay, we'll do the beetle first. Worm is going to be next. By sand magic, everybody went. Oh, okay. So you all, you're all about the worm. Well, let's do the worm first, then. The worms, the worm first. Uh, the dung beetle afterwards. Okay, dung beetle uh, uh, after the worm. Let's move all this, all this down, 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 down to the edge. We have one monster in place. Very good. Very good. Okay. So up so that we see the guidelines again and we will start a new monster and that is going to be a sandworm a sandworm which is actually made of sand name is going to be last we're going to think of a clever name later uh, but right now it's just a sandworm and what we know about it is that it's made of sand <laughs> actually made of sand only travels above ground <laughs> Uh, we also know that it's formed by sand magic. So we've just added add another category of magic to the world, right? There's another school of magic we didn't know about yet. Now we know that sand magic exists. It's a whole thing. It's a whole school of magic. Uh, when it gathers by wind in one place. Okay, by sand magic. Um, it's formed by sand magic when wind gathers sand in one location okay created by doofus magicians china boy explain to me exactly what doofus china boy explain to me exactly what doofus magicians are i keep calling you china boy because it's just too appropriate what does that mean doofus magicians silly name never mind well i mean silly names were never uh an obstacle in Questers of Yalpolar. There was never something that, that stopped us from deciding, to making a decision and writing it detail in the world. Uh, so if you have an explanation later on, we can make it something that has to, something to do with doofus uh, magicians. Um, a faraway, oh, a faraway land called Doofus. <laughs> That's actually another kingdom, another an island or another continent somewhere. Um, okay. I think... I think so. We need to decide because there's been two competing suggestions. Either they were made of, uh, made out of like a natural phenomena where wind collects sand in one location, and then there's some kind of natural, spontaneous magic happening, or they come from a distant land called, or they were made, do, <laughs> Doofurst, <laughs> King Doofurst of Doofus. <laughs> it couldn't be both. No, no, they won't be both. They will. They will be. They will have one origin. I want. It, I want it to be like clear. Something that players can either investigate or find out about or or want to know more about. So, I want it to be one of these two things. Are they a natural phenomenon or do they come from the land of doofus? I like natural. More votes. Any other ideas? Anyone else? Natural too. So it's the magic of the desert. Yeah. Okay. So it's just the magic of the desert uh, by sa spontaneous. It's formed by spontaneous sand magic when wind gathers in one location. Um, cool. Nice. Uh, so uh, physical description, please. <laughs> uh, give me a physical description. They're made of sand, but maybe there's more stuff. To, to know to see to notice about them the way they look uh, some details about their looks the way they move maybe the way they sound give me more details about the description like worm and they are warm <laughs> long and narrow and invisible when they only visible when they move oh nice 
only visible when they move. Feed on other magic. That's in abilities. Abilities. Feed on magic. That's very cool. <coughs> Fata Morgana. Oh, okay. So unavailable move from afar can be mistaken for um, um, heat coming off the ground, right? Just for like a, a, a heat shimmer. For a heat shimmer. Nice. Um, mm -mm. What else? Uh, when they actually are, they're above the ground, they move around, they're in a fight, what do they look like? They have no teeth. Cool, no teeth. What do they have? Give me some positives. What are they? What do they look like? I, I'm, let's say I'm a GM. I need to describe them to my characters. There's an enemy. They're above you. They're going to, to bite you. What do they look like? No eyes. Antenna. Antenna. <laughs> Instead of eyes. Cool. They can rear up or wrap around things. Can rear up and wrap around things. Nice. Four antennae. Four antenna instead of eyes. Cool. Um, mm -mm, no teeth. Okay, so I'm gonna make some some dis the decisions about the, the the body, the main body of the creature. Um, uh, flowing sand. Um, instead of the whole body moving. But like the whole body crawling, crawling along, uh, more sand forms into uh, the worm's body while the tail is left behind. So that's how it moves. More sand comes up to form the, the, the front side, the, the front part of the, the body, and it forms more and more worm while the tail uh, disintegrates and is left behind just as regular sand. So it actually doesn't have one, it's not just one pile of sand, which is its body, it's just like whatever sand it gets into. Uh, this means it can change color and texture according to where it is right because if it gets into an area where the sand is darker it's going to become darker right it's going to form itself from the sand around it um it's limited only to only moving through sand to seek stone into sand with magic that is a very good question i think if it can only move on sand it could be a nice limitation right like sandwich from that other ip we're not mentioning because we're not ripping it off at all you can actually be safe if you're standing on top of rock because it can't climb on top of the rock because there's no sand together. Or it can actually make anything into sand. It can get, actually slither onto a regular earth like outside of the desert or a stony like up on the mountain on the, on the rocks and the stones of the mountain and just form sand out of the surroundings. That's, I mean, both of these are cool options. I think I'll write down that normally... It can't, right, exactly. Either sand or anything that can serve as sand, anything that's, that's in small particles. It can't move on normal ground or rock, but can substitute any kind of small particles for sand, right? A limited ability to use its magic once per fight. This magic, oh, of breaking down stone into sand. I think, uh, uh, I think let's 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 leave it as this kind of constant limitation. Uh, it's it can't climb onto rock. It can't do that. It can only gather uh, small particles, which means uh, a normal like ground earth, like a, a forest ground or something that has like plants holding it in place, like grassland or something is not usable by it. Only if it's separate dry particles that we can just gather up. Um, and then it gives like the, it, it, it 
opens up a, a whole like venue of cool things you can do with it, right? Normally you meet these things in sand, but then in a later session, maybe one of them gets uh, uh, taken by some enemy, some villain, kidnaps one of these or, or, or takes one of these worms and bottles it up and then moves it to somewhere else where it can use another kind of, of particle and it puts it down in a, I don't know, uh, a, a, a rice field and it's, it's made of rice grains that it just gathers up and becomes a rice worm or it puts it down in a treasure room full of gold coins and it becomes a gold worm made of gold coins all gathered in the shape of a long worm. There's a witch that uses them to gather magic. Oh, a witch that uses them and a witch that help, helps them move by expanding sand areas. Um, okay, so now we will write down behavior. Um, expanding the desert helps, helps them. Um, maybe someone does that. They can be used as uh, mage hunters because they eat magic. Uh, we need to write that down in the stats. It's very important when we write down the stats, we remember that they can be, they eat magic, which means that wizards need to be very careful of them because they can eat their spells, maybe eat them, the, the, the wizard itself and like absorb the magic in them. Naturally solitary, let's get close to each other, they merge. Haha, <laughs> nice. Naturally solitary. Um, if they get too close to each other, they merge. Exclamation mark. It sounds really nice. I would love to like to join. <laughs> it really does sound nice right now, doesn't it? Yeah, it is very nice. Uh, even if I do say so myself, uh, you can always watch. But Mondays, you usually play your mask campaign, Sally. Uh, if ever you have a canceled session in the future, you'll have a consolation cons consolation prize of being able to come to watch us play uh, uh, Questers of Yalfala. Uh, 8.30s Israel time. You can always uh, always join and watch us Monday nights. So, um, yeah, what else? What else do we want to um, add? Uh, I think that's, actually, that's enough. That's a lot. That's a lot of things. Nothing else we need to add. That's pretty much a very uh, interesting kind of creature. And now, uh, for stats, I will say more dangerous yeah merge yeah definitely if, if some of them merge they get more dangerous i'll write that down as one of the abilities uh, uh or uh or under the stats in a second so each one separately they should be pretty big and intimidating on their own right they should be big uh which means one solitary one they split. Ah, <laughs> cool. So wait, one solitary one, one normal one. It should be like a big enemy because sandworms, uh, classically, they're pretty. Uh, they're pretty big. I think they'll have five hit dice. Mm, maybe more. Six hit dice. Six hit dice, and then. Um, uh. uh, uh, uh they need to have uh, what else do they need to have attacks special abilities right some attacks some special abilities and uh other features that are useful in fights what is this come on come on all right uh six hit dice attacks are gonna be a uh, slam a slam attack which is uh 2d12 damage okay it needs to be quite a powerful attack Oh, small can get inside armor. Oh, so like small and sneaky, like small snakes. Hmm, interesting. So our, let's let's have a vote. Let's have a vote. Big makes sense. Yeah, both make sense. Both make sense. I, I mean, we're inventing this thing. We're just making it up. So let's decide. Are they small, like normal size snakes? Or are they big, like mythic, epic sandworms? I think we want to have a base size. When they just form from the desert spontaneously by the spontaneous sand magic, I want to know what size they are to begin with. 
Sally. So we have like a normal size and that's the stats I'm gonna write. The stats I'm gonna write are like the normal size. <clears throat> so uh, cast your votes and tell me, what, what, what do you want them to be? Like normally big or normally small? Begin small, but they tend together. Okay, so they start small. One vote for small. I actually like small as well. I like them to be small. Smaller, um, smaller kinds of, uh, of creatures when they spontaneously uh, uh, form. So it's going to be a uh, two hit die creature. They're going to have two hit dice, which is um, not much. Something you expect like a normal uh, fighting humanoid to have. Like two hit dice is like about average for a, a normal humanoid enemy. Uh, so uh, an intimidating magical worm can be something something like that. And then a slam attack, like a tail, tail slam, can be, um, it'll be much, much weaker than what I wrote. It'll just be 1d8 damage. Just 1d8. Throw me in the deep desert somewhere. Nice. And you can meet them small, but then you continue adventuring a huge one would be a boss. Yep, yep, exactly. You're, you're thinking the same thing, Sally, and sit still behave. I think uh, in behavior, I'll write down that there are progressively larger and larger ones the deeper into the desert you go. Nice. So tail slam 1d8 and then um, uh, we will also add in a uh, eat magic attack. This eat magic attack, uh, you need to, um, it needs to hit you and then it can eat some of your magic. You do a save. I think it should be an int save or um, lose one magic item or reagent or lose uh, one magic spell uh regen spells return after a night's sleep okay so this is a magic an eat magic attack so if you are a wizard someone who uses magic you get hit by this specific attack then you don't take any damage uh but um or actually you know what let's put it on top of the attack tail slam it's gonna be a um a tail slam 1d8 and there's a bite 1d4 uh, plus eat magic okay a bite doesn't do a lot of magic just 1d4 uh and then in save or lose one magic item or reagent or lose one magic spell so you do an in save which is an in intelligence check it depends on your intelligence. The more intelligence you have, the easier time you're going to have to avoid this effect. But if you don't make the check, uh, you lose uh, of your choice one magic item or reagent you have. Reagent is the source with which wizards power their spells in this system. So reagents are uh, uh, their uh, usable items that um, uh, are uh, consumables. They run out eventually, uh, but they're still quite valuable. So you, you need to choose to either lose one magic item or reagent, or if you don't have any uh, left or you don't, you're not willing to lose any of them, you lose one of your magic spells. You can't use the magic spell until you get a night's uh, sleep. Okay? So that's something... That's quite a threat to wizards and kind of explains why a bunch of these can be very, very, um, can be very effective against um, magic users. Uh, what does, uh, what is what does the sand, sand drill do? And what are, what, actually, what do all these mean? Make dips in the, the ground by diverting sand. What does that mean exactly? What, what is that, like what kind of ability is that exactly? Also a sand drill, what does that do? <clears throat> oh, I'm gonna write down uh, camouflage, right? We decided that they are very um, camouflaged while stationary. We know that about them. What else? Other uh, uh, ideas to trip people up and make them fall easier for little worms to catch? Oh, they can they can like make dents in the ground, make like pits for people to st stumble and trip and fall. 
Drill destroys normal equipment, drills through stuff by spiraling. I think I don't like the drill because we said they can only move above ground. It's actually a limitation they have as well. They're only on top of the sand. They can't drill through things. They can't. They, they're just made of sand. And the way they move is by collecting more sand up. So suddenly becoming like a drill and moving through, like breaking through barriers and stuff. I think it doesn't really fit with the... Um, the image, like the kind of uh, uh, foe that they are, we've already established. Regeneration, spend spell point, regenerate by gathering sand. I think that... Um, use magical charge to regenerate one hit die. It makes a lot of sense. So when they eat spells or magical items, they eat the magic they gain a magical charge. They can then use those magical charges to regenerate hit dice. That's something they can do. They have these magical charges uh, and they can, um, through humans and equipment, I, they're dangerous enough as it is. They don't need another special attack. They have one very special attack, which is very dangerous uh, as it is. The regeneration uh, idea is very good. The tripping up and making people fall. We said they can wrap around things, right? We said they can they release a magical charge. Oh, hmm. So maybe uh, uh, their remains are magically charged sand. And then when they die, maybe they do something happens. Sad bolt. <laughs> Maybe maybe something happened with if they die while they're charged with magic. I mean, ha like they leave a sand reagent. Cool, yeah. I like a sand, uh, uh, a magically charged sand that you can use as reagent for other, especially for sand magic. Maybe sand wizards go into the desert especially to hunt them. Right? They they try to hunt them, even though it's especially uh, dangerous. These worms can kill wizards very very easily. Rearing up and wrapping doesn't make sense where we wound up with them. Yeah, it doesn't. It's true. They don't really rear up and wrap around things. We need to uh, blah, blah, blah. Abilities. They can't. They don't really, really rear up and wrap around things. I also think doing this thing with the making pits in the sand, I don't really see that happening. They're not solid enough to do that, right? They leave gem droppings. <laughs> droppings. Our gems. <laughs> nice. Very nice. Thank you very much, Trino Boy. Good idea. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I think we have it uh down. We're 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 just we're basically um basically there. Uh we want to now um we want to think of a name. Yeah, only for sand magic. It's true, exactly. So sand wizards go into the desert. It's especially dangerous because it's very dangerous to meet these worms if you're a wizard, if you carry magic with you. Uh, but uh, if you're a sand wizard, this is a very powerful reagent. The remains, the sand that they leave behind is a very powerful reagent to use in sand magic. Uh, so it's a very valuable, uh, um, it's a very valuable place to hunt. Uh, think of a name, please. Yeah, cool, cool, yeah, cool ideas. I like all of that, that's very cool. I'm gonna start uh, drawing it already uh, because I have some ideas about what it's gonna look like. Uh, but you think of ideas for a name. Does this look like sand? Yep, they are, yeah, yeah. Two very valuable but dangerous creatures, it's true. This is the ground, right? This is the desert. I have an idea about how to represent what these creatures look like. You think you have a name? Al Al Khaled? What? Al Khaled? Is this is this a, a Hebrew joke? A Hebrew pun? <laughs> what is that? 
Uh, and then there's the sandworm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, mm, how do I draw it? Oh God, there's not enough tools here. Now, uh, Hebrew Dune, yeah. This is it. See what I'm doing? See what I'm doing there? Oh, whoops, I changed color in the middle. No, no, it's this, right? No, it's not this either. Shit, I forgot what the color I was drawing in. Oh no. Oh no, that's terrible. I need to know what color I was drawing in. Ah, yes, there it is. I have it. Okay, cool. So this is the sandworm. But then, look at that. Look at this. Look what's happening here. It moves on to a different, a different area of the desert with different color sand. And look what happens when it steps on a different different colored sand all right that's enough of the ground that's enough of the ground i think i did a very good job portraying the ground all right all right now look at this Ooh, yeah the rest of it is a different color oh my god and then it ends in like a, a some kind of like a head thing and it has I will remind you, there's four antennae with which it can detect magic. Whew, okay. Let's look at chat a little bit. Mongolian, wow. The worms are called Shai Hulud. Yeah, I remember. I remember that the name of the worm using Google Translate is according to sound, already sound good. That's true. And Trina Boy will uh, definitely identify with that. My brain keeps wanting to say smurms. So I'm getting out of my system. Four eyes? <laughs> so is smurm before I go with that? <laughs> and, and then uh, well, maybe I'll be extremely disappointed. So just save me the disappointed. Is it, the disappointment. Is it an existing thing already? Is smurm an existing thing? <laughs> Four-eyed smurm, the fabled four-eyed smurm. Uh, <laughs> oh God! So, suggest other names. Give me other names. Four eyes? They don't have four eyes. They have four antennas. Right? Anten antennae. Or stalks, Merm. <laughs> oh, God. It's the Smurm. Oh, no. It's going to be Smurm. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Uh, it's a little bit more manageable as well. Still, still respectable. Doofus smurms. Uh, we we kind of left behind the uh, left behind. <laughs> we left behind the doofus idea. Oh God, does it still behave? It's shocked. Horhoi, <laughs> horhoi. Yeah, just a callback. Mm -hmm. <laughs> else, else, horhoi. What is else? Is this part of the Mon Mongolian as well? Is it from the original Mongolian? Akalton. <laughs> That's more ways to rip off Dune without English speakers knowing it. <clears throat> smurm. It's the smurm going once. <laughs> 
<laughs> Quick! El Scorjoy is Mongolian, yes. Google told me it means sandworm. El Scorjoy. Okay, uh, there is El Scorjoy is one of is one suggestion, Smurm is another. So now you're going to vote. You're going to vote, and I'm going to also participate in the vote. But I want you also, all, all, all to the, like first you to decide and to write down what you prefer. Smurm or El Scorjoy? I vote for both, <laughs> Sally. Ever the... Um, Ever the neutral voice. So sit still, behave. There's one vote smurm and one abstain. What do you vote for? <laughs> I can't vote for smurm, it's too ridiculous. So what do you vote for? What is your vote? votes you first talk for Hoy. <laughs> no 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 more don't make me decide no okay so more abstains uh there is only one vote for smurm and i i also vote for smurm so it's smurm forever now that's gonna be it's gonna be written down uh and uh smurm uh a sandworm actually made of sand only grows above ground and there gathers and gathers sand in one location. Cool, nice. Uh, I love it. I love everything about that. That is a very, very cool uh, monster. Just a smurm. <laughs> Internet travel. Grab dinner. Let me listen to what's happening. Smurm. <laughs> okay. Good. Good job, Trina boy. Okay. So we have the smurm. We have feast your eyes. On the terrible and wonderful Smurm. This is a monster of the desert, slap ass walrus. We're writing down monsters, and this is now uh, a Smurm, which has a name, which is the most important bit, some art, which you will understand what you're seeing in the art when you read the description and the behavior uh, and abilities. And uh, yeah, you're gonna see it in future sessions to still behave. There's gonna be. <laughs> I'm gonna say I'm gonna say smurm like in a dramatic voice like a dozen times in one of the episodes coming up at some point in the future and you'll know it it, it was all your fault you you'll only you have yourself to blame <laughs> when it happens so the smurm is a sandworm a magical sandworm uh, that smells magic hunts wizards actually can be very useful as a mage hunter uh, and eats magic uh, and then um, uh, other than that, is very cool because it takes. Uh, it's like, uh, have you read or, or not seen? Have you read the Neverending Story? Because there's like a magical lion there, a creature that is like formed of the desert, and where it stands on different colored sand, its body changes to the color of the sand it stands on. Yep, yeah, so still behave knows what I'm talking about. It's called the Many Colored Death. Which is a very, very cool name for a character. The Many Colored Death. Uh, okay, cool. Smurm! <laughs> <laughs> yes! Yes! Uh, uh, <laughs> it's sounds uh, are smurmers. <laughs> It's uh, uh, it's it's voice. It's voice. Um, um, is uh, exclusively smurmers. Oh wow, that's yes. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Okay, cool. All right, we have uh, more time for more monsters. I can do this all night, really. So uh, we had to. First one is the uh, assault rats, which are rats that eat salt uh, and uh, can uh, uh, hit with electricity uh, that they generate in their long, luxurious fur. Second one is the smurm. Um, <clears throat> another poem by Sally. Thank you, Sally. A smurm swarm is upon us. It swum through the fields of gold, through all the sand it flows, until magic it holds. None alive can con us. We will hunt it down. Even if it's grown, even if we've flown. Oh, wow. Amazing. Amazing. That's what you're here for, Sally. 
these poems. Okay, uh, another monster. I want one now. Let's have one which interacts with the day and night cycle. Okay, uh, I want this to be the prompt for the next one. A monster that actually is either different in the day and the night. We know that the assault rats we wrote, they, they sleep at night, they like they, they, they charge with a little moisture and stuff, it's cool. Uh, but I want a monster that actually like changes or that only hunts at night and then it's vulnerable in, in the, uh, in, during the day or something like really, really different. And then me as a game master, I can introduce this monster and there can be like a chase. And when it chases you at night, it's a different thing than when it chases you at, uh, during the day. And when and then like during one chase, day can change into night and back and forth between day and night several times. So I want to have a monster that actually interacts with this change between day and night. Uh, anyone have any idea about something that could do that? <clears throat> I'm gonna give you a few seconds to make your suggestions. I'm gonna have some. I have some ideas of my own, but I wanna I wanna see if you have any ideas about a, a monster that actually fundamentally changes its behavior or its shape. A will-o'-the-wisp slash amuda esh ve amuda anan. <laughs> the biblical, yeah, pillar of fire. Underground, above ground in different times. Oh, cool. Underground or above ground in different times under the desert floor. Uh, a will-o'-the-wisp amuda esh amuda nan. That was the thing for those of us who are not well-versed in the Bible. The thing that led the people of Israel, according to legend, uh, through the desert and during the day uh, it was I think right it was during the day it was the Amuda Nun which was uh, a pillar of like a, a smoky like thing and during night it was a pillar of fire that lit up the night it was like the thing that led them through the desert all the way to Israel led them very badly which actually uh, um, lends more to the idea of the will of the wisp right because made a very Made a very, um, yeah, pillar of cloud. Mudachol is the third form of Amud. Mudachol, there was also, uh, also pillar of sand. Led them great. Let them, it took them 40 years to cross the desert. To cross, like, up, very small. <clears throat> so, cool. Something that's like a will o' the wisp. It, it leads people. A stray, a smurm. No, a smurm is. Oh yeah, it's already a pillar of sand. Yeah, it's it's already kind of like made of sand. It's true, but I wasn't. I want something. You're not here to defend the pillar. That still behave. You're not here. It's not a personal attack. <laughs> the forty that make it sentient and rambles a lot. Never gets to the point. Okay, okay. So we already have some ideas. Let's start because we don't know what the thing is yet, right? But it, it's kind of based on. Uh, kind of will uh, the wisp will a uh, wisp right? That's how you write this thing. Kind of a will a wisp um, leads people astray, rambles a lot, never gets to the point. <laughs> I love that. I love it, especially as a game master. I love the fact that I'm going to have to run this thing one day and it has to just ramble nonstop and never get to the point. You aren't. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to have to forgive me here. My biblical story is basically... The, yes, exactly. That's why I'm filling it in. That's why I'm filling it in. For you and maybe other watchers that aren't... <laughs> don't have our background. Passover just happened. The, the memory is fresh. Um, so, um, yeah, cool. More, more ideas. It's, it's like a will of the wisp and it leads people astray. What happens to it during the day and the night? Please let us, let me know. Let, let's decide that right now. What's the cool thing that happens to it when day changes into night or vice versa? <clears throat> Maybe it's harmless. Maybe it's a will-o'-wisp kind of thing that leads people astray during one of these times and during the other time it's a monster and then it devours you, right? During the day, it can only run away and it's very weak, but it's very good at running away and staying hidden and maybe just like leading you on. It's a pillar of blood during the night. It's a pillar of frogs that croak. Uh, I, I, although nobody's going to sue us for this one, I still want it to be something that... 
is not such clear a reference, maybe, to the actual biblical stories. Real helpful during one of the day and then really unhelpful. Oh, actually helpful during one of the phases. Okay, so decide. Decide during which which phase it is helpful. <laughs> during which phase it actually gonna be helpful. Wheel of Wisp. If you can make that if you can make that uh, relevant, Sally, it's going to actually be the name of the creature. We're going to make it the Wheel of Wisps. An actual wheel. So, okay. The being itself is underground during the day, luring travelers until nighttime when it comes out and attacks. That's cool. I mean, if they feel like if I feel like if they thought adventure is trusted during the day, it's definitely going to turn on them whilst they sleep. Oh, okay. Um, night is not necessarily sleeping time in this area because, as I said, day turns day and night cycles are very short. Day turns into night like over several minutes or hours, but like it it can be like very erratic. So we don't necessarily sleep at night. <clears throat> Sally is off on her own tangent of puns leading to puns. She's in the seventh layer of puns already. <laughs> Red schmerling. <laughs> it's the Jewish red hair. <laughs> oh, Lord. Red schmerling. That if, again, if you make it work, if you suggest things that make it work, that's going to be the name. Hmm. <clears throat> On the top, throwing shade in a small circle around the center. I mean, there's... Okay, guys, there's too many ideas here. Too many ideas. Trina Boy is back to Pillar of Blood. Uh, where <laughs> we, need to, we need to narrow this down. So this is what I decide. Okay. Actual creature is underground. Only... Uh, Above ground, it's it's a circle of a circle of what? What is the circle made of, or the pillar? It's either a pillar or a circle, but what is it made of? We already have a creature made of sand, so it's not going to be made of sand. It's, it needs to be like a different thing, different phenomena, different material. Blood is a bit, I think, out there, right? It can be made of blood, but it's just going to be very ominous. No one's going to trust it. It needs to be actually helpful. Think that, think something that if you, as a player, you saw in the desert, you might want to follow. You might want to, you know, follow it to somewhere. <clears throat> Clouds, leaves, leaves is nice. Leaves is cool. It can be just a cloud. A cloud is good. It can be a, a water vapor. The thing you should trust looks ominous, but the opposite happens when it's not trustworthy. Oasis seems to obviously like a mirage. It's made of puppies or something. <laughs> nice. There's already an oasis. <laughs> Actually, there was an oasis in the adventure as well. There was an oasis there. Oh, we didn't do the beetle, by the way, the dung beetle. Yeah, but I think maybe the dung beetle is not. Not really. We're not vibing with a dung beetle, I think. If you want to do the dung beetle afterwards, we can do that as well. Um, <clears throat> so, what, what is it? What does it look like? Give me a description. Remember, it's something that the, the players need to actually want to interact with, to talk with, and then to lead them towards somewhere. Flowers. <laughs> Dung beetle, but is this one of the beetles with the red <laughs> This is just a dung beetle. Kind of like a toad. Flowering violins reaching above ground. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull rank here. I'm gonna take the idea of a cloud, which means it's not gonna be a circle. A circle is too specific and too ominous. I want it to be I want it to be Oh, it's a ring, which is Ringo Star! No, it's gonna be, uh, it's a cloud. It's just a cloud. It's a speaking cloud. The cloud rambles a lot. <clears throat> oh, God. 
in the actual oh it was it was in the actual episode oh i don't remember that With, did he did Trent do the Ringo Starr accent? Did he speak as Ringo Starr? I don't remember that. <clears throat> okay, that's that was, that was very nice. I'm gonna have to go back and rewatch it. I watched the whole thing. I promise. I, I promise you, I did. I just forgot that one. Uh, so um, let's um... <laughs> yes, <laughs> he tried. Uh, Trent, he's a trooper. The um. So it's a speaking cloud. The cloud rambles a lot, never gets to the point, uh, but it does promise help. It tries to distract, distract you, the cloud, while the underground origin moves to eat you. Yes, yes. Okay, cool. So in behavior, we'll write down that the cloud tries to lead you to, the, uh, to a uh, hunting ground. Or the creature's lair, maybe, uh, in order to hunt you. But is it actually helpful? I mean, does it actually help you get to places you need to get to? Quicksand. Oh, quicksand is nice. Tries to lead you to quicksand. Yep. That's very nice. They go to quicksand in order to hunt you because it can't climb out uh, outside. It teaches you a lot of facts as it's rambling. <laughs> okay, so what is the, like, it needs to be part of the creature's abilities, right? The creature's abilities need to include something that's very helpful to the players. What can the creature do that's very helpful to the heroes when they meet it? It can detect something or answer questions of a certain sort. It has some kind of like knowledge or, or power or, or power to create something. Maybe it can just create certain kinds of things. Desert creatures and survival. Mm. It's, just, it's too vague. Something more specific. I want something more specific. Something that, that you know, I can give. I, as a GM, I can give it to my players and they'll say, oh, wow, that's cool. Endows them with gifts. What kinds of gifts? Be more specific than that, please, cleaner boy. Tell me what kind of gifts. Time passes normally for a period. Huh. Huh. So maybe it actually provides protection from the desert. Right? Time flows normally, or maybe the, uh, the weather is more comfortable. You know, the extremes of the heat of the, and the cold are not as bad. Spell durations are going to be super messed up. Shade and water, too. Cool. I like that. Just survival. Shade, water, time passes normally. Okay, okay. Um, aura of uh, normalcy, let's call it, and safety. Um, uh, uh, heat and, like, uh, let's say climate is more uh, bearable. Uh, shade and water are uh, <clears throat> uh, shade, and, uh, shade and water are uh, provided and um, what else did we say? Time passes normally so uh, time and distance uh, shenanigans aren't as bad so that's actually the way it interacts with the, the day and night cycle that I asked before. That's the way it interacts with it. It's kind of like it, it, it kind of um, tries to steal your lifetime. Cool. But I think what it does, the way it interacts with the weirdness of the desert is that it becomes like a more an, a normal place when it's around. It will provide this transfer of tranquility and normality, but it's going to take something in return. Hmm. Cool. So what does it do to people in the aura? Sally suggested it's gonna steal your lifetime or your bizarreness. It's steal your bizarreness. But I need to know something more specific. What does it do exactly to you? What happens to you when you're there? What does it take? Hmm. <clears throat>
you think it is normal. Um, that's cool, but that's something that me I, I need to describe as a GM, and they won't think it's normal. It's a magical cloud that can talk and provide them with shade. They're, they're not going to think it's normal. They need something specific about what, what does it take in return? What, 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 what changes about you when you're in the aura, when you're like under the cloud? Everything is much nicer there. It's cooler. It's going to be more comfortable at night. You have some water. Maybe it gives rain. It, it's rain. It rains sometimes. You age faster. But how fast? Do you actually age so, so quickly that you can harder to think clearly? That's cool. The problem with that is going to be hard, hard to describe to players. What do I, I just tell them it's hard to think clearly. It's, it's going to be like, like my players and questers, they're going to run with it. They're going to do it very cool in a very cool way. Um, aging faster. So do you actually instantly get old? Like a ghost scares you, you instantly, you, you, you age like 10 years. I mean, it's interesting. When you will leave, you will be a few years older. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. I, I kind of like that. An hour a year. An hour becomes a year. Yeah. You, all, you age a whole year. Yeah, a year, an hour. Yeah, exactly. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, interesting ideas. Very interesting ideas. Uh, does it mean that if you... Loses inhibitions. Can't stop thinking about doing that thing you really shouldn't do. Rub that genie lamp. Eat the strange berries in your backpack. <laughs> nice. To kill it to regain your life. Yeah, you need to be able to regain that because otherwise it's going to be very bum like a bummer to players who lose lots of years of life for their character. The constant shadow drowns out other senses. The light dims. Harder to hear others. Or trade for it. Trade others' time. Or trade. Um. Okay, there's a lot of the constant chatter drowns out other senses. It's an extent light dims hard to hear others. Hmm. So what is what is that? Why does it do that? Maybe it makes you it dims your senses. It makes you think that you're only safe in here, and then it takes you. <clears throat> cool. Yeah. That could be one of their ways. That could be one of the ways for players to actually to, to turn back the, the, the curse, the, 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 to, to gain back the, the stolen years of life. They can sacrifice something else or someone else. Go on a quest for it. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I mean, it's intelligent. We know that it's intelligent. You can always talk to it because it's a talking cloud. It has to have some intelligence. Okay, so, okay, okay, so, um, in the aura, um, <clears throat> senses are dulled and thoughts are clouded due to constant chattering. Um, yeah, it's cool. We'll write that down in a second. Um, the creature steal is stealing your youth. You are aging rapidly while in under the cloud so do we are we giving up on the idea of the quicksand is it that doesn't happen anymore oh that's good yes sensor dull thoughts are clouded uh and uh we add and um uh, uh movement um or let's say, um, uh, yeah, reactions are slower, are slowed. A symbiotic relationship with quicksand. Only if you die, it takes your bones down with quicksand to consume them. You try to leave, oops, there's quicksand. Oh, the quicksand is used as aware of the deceit. Okay, so it steals your life force, and then when you're old and you're dying, it eats your, your corpse or your bones, right? It eats you, when you're already old, into the quicksand. So maybe it's actually 
two creatures or one either one creature with two bodies two parts right or two creatures that are in like a symbiotic relationship with each other that's pretty cool so uh what is the um uh, description of the creature underground the creature underground underground what is the uh, underground creature yeah so the cloud feeds on your youth but the creature down underground feeds on your actual body uh, a sand mole maga smurm guacamole <laughs> Guacamole. <laughs> guacamole. And uh, well, what's the, sa the the cloud gonna? It is toad like. Use a quick sense to keep its moisture. Oh, toad. Uh, so the underground creature is a toad. I like a toad. A toad creature because it's like it's wet. It's sweat and it can't go up above ground. It can't ever go up above, above ground because it's uh, like a wet toad. Yeah, it doesn't walk. It doesn't walk either, Sally. It only uh, slithers underground. It can only move underground. It's it, it, it can never go up because it will dry out and it wears a top hat. Okay, cool. So, um, large, constantly wet toad. <coughs> Toad-like creature. Mostly mouth wears a top hat like the venerable left person that we played as in the warlock of firetop mountain who wore a top hat um no need for eyes no eyes or yeah no eyes can't go above ground or it will uh dry up and die severe allergy to silk gloves <laughs> allergy to silk gloves i mean it's a little random we said no random right variety weird funny weird uh, uh, crazy fucked up is good this is a little bit random right it will dry up yeah I don't know. I'm I'm gonna think about the top hat and the silk gloves for a little while. It might I might I might erase that. I might delete that if if I can't ex like tie it up with the rest of, rest of the things that we 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 uh, wrote down. So the try try cloud tries to lead you to quicksand um, in order to hunt you. So it's not leading you to quicksand actually. It's not quicksand at all. Cloud uh, lures you to. Uh, die to age and die underneath it while the toad uh, digs up from below and uh, swallows you when you die opening mouth and gathering water it's yeah it just it opens like it's the a cloud man sing underground toad or do we make this a pun how do we make this a pun <laughs> gathering atmospheric water cool nice so um the cloud lures you to die underneath it while creating quicksand uh with the moisture with the uh with the rain actually just it's raining underneath it can rain uh, with the rain the toad waits below and swallows you when you die when you uh um when you die and get submerged nice very nice Okay, so we have a bit of a complicated creature here. Let's let's review what we have already. Um, symbiotic, um, two symbiotic monsters, one above ground, one below. 
Description. Speaking cloud. Rambles a lot, never gets to the point. Uh, underground creature. Large, constantly wet toad-like uh, creature. Mostly mouth. Wears a top hat. I'm gonna, I'm gonna delete the top hat and silk gloves. I'm gonna delete that. Um, I, I like weird things. The wind and the will of the wisp. They form the age magic. The age magic? Oh, together. Don't have enough magic alone. Uh, I don't know about that. I think the cloud does it. The cloud is the one that does that. Uh, never get to the point. Um, behavior. Blah blah blah. The cloud lures you to age and die underneath it while the, creating quicksand with the rain. The toad wait, waits below and swallows you when you die and get submerged. Abilities. Aura of normalcy and safety. Climate is more bearable. Shade and water are provided. Time and distance shenanigans aren't as bad. In the aura, senses are dulled and thoughts are clouded and reactions are slowed. Um, yes, due to constant chattering. The creature is stealing your youth. You're aging rapidly while under the cloud. Underground. Um, huge mouth. <laughs> That's an ability. Can swallow humanoids whole. <clears throat> okay, that's cool. That's, that's the abilities for the underground creature. Okay, so uh, description behavior abilities. Um, is that enough? Do we know enough about these creatures? <clears throat> I think we know quite a bit. Let's um let's write down the stats. So now the stats for the cloud. You meanwhile think of a name, okay? It's a cloud, a sentient cloud that keeps talking and steals your youth above ground. Uh, and uh, uh, below the ground, it's a, a huge wet toad that's waiting to eat you when you sink into. Um, uh, sink is a better word for here, by the way. When you die in sink into the quick sand. <clears throat> Cloud. Uh, I think it doesn't... Can it even be killed? I think... Um, hit dice are not applicable to the cloud because it can't be killed can be destroyed by powerful spell or ability of some sort but it doesn't have hit points attacks <clears throat> confuse <laughs> member berry Oh, the cloud knows your past and talks to you about things you've been through. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, uh, yeah, so, um, mm, 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 mm. so abilities. Cloud knows your past. Chatters about past experiences. Nice. Very, very nice. Okay, uh, attacks. Nice. Very nice. So it can be built by a powerful spell or ability, but uh, it can't just be hit with weapons. Uh, it confuses you and dulls you. Confuse and dull senses. Uh, you need to make a wisdom save. Uh, a wisdom save, and if you don't, um, take um, you take damage, but not to your hit points. It doesn't take away your hit points. It takes away... Or take 
<laughs> Highly charismatic, yes. Highly charismatic. Confused and dull senses. Um, wisdom save, or what happens to you? Or take uh, 1d6. It's not hit point damage. 1d6 wisdom damage. Okay, wisdom damage means it actually reduces your wisdom by 1d6. Yeah, intelligence intelligence actually makes more more sense. Yeah. Intelligence damage. Now, overwhelming calm charm effect do not want to leave. Yeah, I think that also is uh that. Um so dull senses in 1d6 intelligence damage and then it has another attack. That's uh steel life. I'm not sure how to I'm I'm kind of ambivalent. Let me okay, I'll I'll talk about something in general now. I'm kind of ambivalent about effects that make me tell the players you now have to act a certain way. That to me is always a cop out. Okay? That I I don't really like that. I like I like the um like methods that I have to actually get into the player's head. That's what I want to do. I want to either represent something mechanically, purely mechanically. For example, if your intelligence goes down, you're going to be less capable of doing things with your intelligence. So that's something that's mechanically represented, uh, like represented by the mechanics, and it works the way I want it to work. Or if it needs to be, if it's a, like a behavior, it's something that I want to have the make the players do, it needs to make the player do that you know it needs to make the, the actual player like to fool the player not the character because i don't like it when i ask my players to lie and and i tell them oh now you're fooled you need to believe that lie which is an obvious lie i don't like that i like it when i actually cause them to do things that are not in their best interest like i, I actually fool them so i need to like we need to think of a way to do that like there can be an attack that confuses and you need to make a wisdom save or take intelligence damage. That's cool. That's very cool. But I think maybe also there needs to be something that actually tempts the players to stay. And I think that thing is going to be... Oh, I know. Oh, my God. Wisdom save or take 1d6 dollar damage secretly. You take it secretly. You don't know that your intelligence goes down. And then, and then later on, when you ask them to make intelligence checks, they roll the dice, they get like an 11, which should be a success for them but you know that this creature who normally this this player this character who normally has 14 intelligence now he has only nine intelligence because it lost some you know that they've actually failed they don't know that that's what i wanted to, to happen they secretly take the damage and then there should be some kind of some kind of series of attacks that it can perform on you, right? This is going to be an ability called uh, Create Water Shade uh, Warmth for the night. At night, it can actually warm you, right? So it can create a lot of maybe int or wist chosen by you. Yeah, maybe maybe it can be both. And then there needs to be like, like a series of attacks. We need to decide exactly which abilities are attacked and when what happens because of it, right? Because when it steals your life, when you start aging, that needs to be your physical abilities, right? Your strength, dexterity, and constitution that start going down because you get older and older. Mm, they lose some old memories. Nice. Again, how do I describe that? That is the challenge here. How do I describe them losing their memories? 
without them autom- like immediately saying, oh shit, something bad happens, I get up, I draw my sword, I go away, I, I exit the aura. You know, they'll immediately know that something is up and they'll, they'll want to start investigating it. <clears throat> it helps in a fight. It could help in a fight. I like the idea of losing memories, but, but I want to have a way to, to, to run that about past. Hmm. <laughs> oh yes, Trina boy. Yes. It asks about the past, but then it kind of changes their recollection of what happened. <gasps> okay, okay, okay. So now then now what we have is there's a wisdom attack that secretly lowers your intelligence. Then it asks questions ab- about the past, and that needs to be an int check, right? That needs to be an intelligence check. Yes. Or, or remember wrong details. And that I can do. That I can do because the players trust the GM if they make an intelligence save, the players trust the GM to tell them the right answer, right? You ask me, hey, do I remember who was that character that I met in the city that gave me that quest? Uh, And I say, okay, make an intelligence check to see if you remember. And then they make an intelligence check. But unbeknownst to them, A, their intelligence is actually lower than they think it is. B, they don't make a save to remember something. That's not the purpose of the check they're making at all. The purpose of the check is to see if the cloud is able to plant the wrong memory in their head. And that is going to be the two-pronged attack. Right. And now, then it steals life. Steal life is, uh, I think, another wisdom uh, save. Um, or... Uh, lose yes it is it still behave and this is the point this was the point where i really started loving this creature when it started doing this every save they throw gives a die towards rest your life should happen automatically gives what does it mean gives a die towards rest what is that what does that mean Trina boy steel life should happen automatically uh yeah you know what you're actually you're absolutely right steel life Every hour, lose one strength, uh, dexterity, and constitution. That's that's the still still life attack. Gives a die towards rest, and then all these are all added towards how many years are lost. A die towards... Oh, you roll a die and this is how many years you lose? <clears throat> I'm not sure what you what you, what you you mean, Finoboy. Scratch that. Okay, cool. Sure. Uh, so right now, this is what happens. It's it, The chatter is a way for the creature to just distract you. For the creature, this is not the way it feeds. It doesn't feed on your actual uh, memory. It feeds on your youth. Yes, yes. Every hour lose. It's like it's it's supposedly permanently, right? It's not really going to be permanent because that that way it really fucks the players over in a way that I don't want to do. I want them to be able to regain those things, but it doesn't regain. It doesn't return normally when days when you rest and days pass. Like usually, ability damage uh, is regained. You need you need to either kill it. Yeah, you need to like kill it. Um, points heal only after creature dies, I think. This is what you need to do. You need to, or by special magic in a fountain. Yeah, special things can, all, can always do special things, like later in the adventure. If they don't kill the cloud, they run away, they lose some, they, they permanently lost some strength at certain constitution. They feel like they've been... They've been really like fucked, but they they look for a way to heal to, to return their uh, their youth. Then they can go. They can find uh, secret magical rituals. 
the top of a mountain with a fountain that returns the youth or the one uh, fairy who lives in a forest that can touch you and heal you. They can, or the, the healing unicorn horn or whatever. So they can do the, the lots of uh, cool, unique things, can do lots of things in this game. We don't need to specify exactly what it is. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Some kind of fountain of youth or, or magic that can do that. I don't want to specify that right now at all. I just want it to be like something that really seems like it's permanent and it seems like it's never going to go back. Uh, but then you can you can research, you can ask around, try to find out how to regain lost youth uh, that's been lost to, to evil magic. And then you can find, you can go like on a quest to uh, return your uh, stats. Whatever it is that restores it has to surely kill toads, the shalt saker of youth. <laughs> yes. <laughs> nice. It's very nice. Salt, salt shaker of youth. Okay, so now toad. The toad is... What did I do? All right. Toad. Uh, it, this does have hit dice, and I think it's going to be a healthy five hit dice, because it's like a big toad. Uh, attacks. Swallow. Hole. Uh, that attack, uh, you need to do a, a strength save. Right, you need to be strong enough to free yourself. That's why it eats uh, people who have been drained uh, completely until they're old, because that way they don't any. Oh, no, it's only as the abyss. <gasps> when people who live in the area die, their bodies are given to the abyss. Because how the people in the area deal with a joint monster? <gasps> oh my God! Yes. Okay, okay, okay. We have a name for the toad. So it's something. We don't know what the name of the cloud is yet, and the. Abyss. We need a name for the for the um, for the cloud though the cloud phenomena. It doesn't even need to have. They might not even need to have a, a name for a. Uh, I, I like the. It doesn't all have to be puns. <laughs> and the gaze. <laughs> ah, the abyss and the gaze. Oh god. Uh, the gaze. It gazes into you. Just name it Claude. <laughs> the cloud name can be punny. I, I, some names doesn't have, don't have to be, doesn't have all to be puns. Uh, I really like the abyss. It's like it's dark. It's it's it, it's it's evil. It's ominous. So strength save or be swallowed or like be yeah be swallowed uh, and take one d six acid damage every round. Um, until you break free. The abyss is Angel in Mongolian. Uh, okay. When you gaze, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely understood the gaze reference. I just, wh why would a cloud be called the gaze? Pun intended. It can name itself Claude and the locals call it something like, <laughs> something like the gaze. Okay, okay. So, description, speaking loud. <clears throat> Cloud. Speaking cloud. No, no, no. Actual name is Claude. That's the actual name. It gazes into your memory. That's what I thought. It gazes into you, right? It gazes into. You know its real name, Claude. You can summon it like some demon. Ha! <laughs> nice. That's uh. That's interesting. Claude the Cloud, or the safety, the shadower, or the safety. The safety is cool. The safety and the abyss. Claude and the Abyss is the new metal band, yes. <laughs> Claude and the Abyss. Uh, uh, the safety is nice. The shadower is also nice. It creates shade. Yeah, the shade. The shade and the Abyss. Or the, the safety is cool. However, locals in the desert would know that it's not really safe. Is it? I mean, wouldn't they? It's... Um, it's... <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the coolest metal band. Uh, okay, okay, okay. So, what's the name? Come on. For, for them, it is a sarcastic name. The safety, fool's errand, shelter. <clears throat> the safety, yeah. Fool's errand is cool. Shelter is perfect. Shelter. 
Call it shelter. Shelter and the abyss. And now we'll change all these to shelter. This is abyss. This as well. Shelter. This. Shelter. Abyss. The shelter in the abyss. Trip them and tell them Claude and the abyss are playing in the amphitheater. And I really have enough like a music act. <laughs> <laughs> shelter in the abyss this is my run below so we need to add that we need to write that down um uh locals call it shelter but know that you must not uh stay underneath it they know, they know that it's dangerous. Cool. <laughs> I love that. Shelter in the abyss. Um, mm -mm -mm. Shady merchant might lie to you to regain own life. <gasps> oh my God, yes. So now when you lose And it calls itself claw to befriend weary travelers. Yeah. Yeah, when you meet it, when you just spontaneously meet it, then it just says, hey, 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 buddy, my name is Claude. Uh, nice. Looks younger the next time they meet him for sure. <laughs> very, very nice. So I'm going to write that down as a separate idea. Let's uh, call it an adventure hook. Old shady merchant uh tries to lure adventurers uh into the under shelter uh to trade their youth for his stolen one next time they meet them um let's call it there don't know if it's a man or a woman yet meet them they are much younger <laughs> oh i love that i love that oh god oh whoops uh, okay okay cool okay we have a lot we have a lot here i need to stretch the sheet you know what I mean. So let's bring it up all the way to 50. Okay, yeah, more space. Need more space. Drag it down, all the way down underneath the assault rats. Okay. I, and the lady who had been to the Fountain of Youth, would trade a vial for something. Who had been to the Fountain of Youth, would trade a vial for something. Yeah, well, that's all part of the quest. Uh, so, um, I will draw the desert floor again. Let's use uh, another kind of brown now. Another kind of brown. This. Desert. <laughs> I am drawing it. I am. Um, um, okay, okay. Now, let's also do the cloud. The cloud, kind of a very light, light gray, uh, and that's that's Claude. <clears throat> Four a.m. Oh my God, Trina boy, go to sleep. Where are you? <clears throat> Where are you, indeed? Trina boy. Bye bye. Nice having you. See you on Saturday or some other time. 
there's some rain, some rain underneath. <laughs> okay, there's going to be bones. There has to be bones of the previous victims, right? Bones uh, are supposed to be white, so I'll also do them in. like a skeleton. Somebody who uh, didn't get away in time. Cool, those are feet, sure, those are feet. Uh, and underneath the skeleton now, what happens is, what's happening is, at this instant, a <clears throat> sand, to yeah rumble starts to form these shapes and underneath underground if they don't get away in time do their clothes still look clean and new who the the adventurers the, the the victims the people who get killed by the clouds oh yeah they should have their equipment right on them <laughs> that's true they should have all their equipment on them but i drew a skeleton already so the skeleton is so um this is like underground there's this and this is what's waiting this is what's waiting for them underground this scary thing this is a dark maw capable of swallowing huge creatures yeah oops <laughs> didn't stay in the lines hey really need a field tool here need to fill a bucket a bucket tool Be able to fill areas i don't have it Now, the creature also is capable of crawling slowly, so it's going to have like some arms and legs. There's going to be some... <laughs> some arms. <sighs> yeah, these look better. Yeah, no, I need to... This one needs to go. This one, this one really needs to go. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's do this. Yeah, this one looks better. Okay, cool. Now there's gonna be some legs. No, no, he's 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 big. Did you all think it's gonna be smaller? <clears throat> I just meant in the game maybe the corpse is really decayed, but all the loot is still shiny and new. Beating this enemy gives a nice reward. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, we need to write a treasure, actually. Uh, a treasure. Uh, uh, section for this enemy. Uh, loot of previously eaten. Uh, previously uh, uh, withered slash eaten. Uh, uh, travelers. So there might be like a lot of a lot of cool stuff that people just left behind because, yeah. Okay. Oh. If it's a giant, it will be difficult to maintain and die. It barely. I think. First of all, Sally, you're looking for too much real world, real world explanations of things. It's a fantasy creature. If you're the size, depending on how size the size has been, yeah, it can change in size. That's true. I thought medium, not huge, or big enough to bite like a whole leg off. Uh, no, I think I'd like it to be big enough to eat the whole, the whole creature, <laughs> the whole, the whole thing in one bite. Let's pick it all up in one 
uh, we do mix again come on yes got no we didn't get it we didn't get it all in one shot again Yes. Nice. Give the toad its own attack. It has. Swallow hole. Right here. Abyss. Five hit dice. Attack. Swallow hole. Strength save will be swallowed and take 1d6 acid damage every round. And it has. It definitely has an under, its own attack. It's an undersand great white toad. <laughs> Jaws theme music plays quietly in the background as it approaches. So we can uh, actually add to its uh, behavior. Um, this huge mountain. Uh, Jaws theme plays uh, quietly in the background as it approaches. Um, and then also it can be another um, another symbiotic thing between them. Um, sometimes you said that sometimes it's like music playing, right? I can't find what you wrote about it, but I think you said there's something like like waiting music plays. Sometimes. Extracting music plays while <clears throat> uh, it's speaking. Music is moving on hold. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yes. Uh, sometimes waiting music plays while it's speaking. Exactly. Yes. Nice. We've written some really sinister stuff. This is a sinister monster. I might, uh, I, I might, this might be taking it too far with some players, uh, but it's, um, yeah, you need to you need to notice it, but it dulls your senses and and the music, the the nice uh, elevator music, uh, uh, distracts you. Yeah, really dramatic rock keyboard covers <laughs> important pieces of classical music. Yes, <laughs> uh, keyboard covers of um. Uh, uh, uh. Famous classical pieces. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> oh wow, that's wonderful. Okay, okay, we we have enough. We have enough. That's a lot. Uh, that's really um a lot actually. We have that's it's two monsters. You could say it's it, it's reasonable because it's actually we've written two two uh, monsters in one. So we have. The Assault Rats, we have the Smurm, and we have Shelter and the Abyss. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, Jesus. So brilliant. Um, anything else? Let's, let's decide on the, um, the kind of boss. Yeah, it might be just one of a kind. It might just be one of a kind. I'm not sure. It might just be one of a kind in the whole desert. But if it's one of a kind, it's going to be stronger. Not just five hit dice. It's going to be more... Like seven or eight hit dice. Um, let's think of one last monster. One last monster before we go to sleep. Uh, I think uh, uh, we have one more in us. Make it a simpler one this time, like the like the assault rat. Very simple. Tells a very simple story, uh, and the smurm also a pretty simple creature. Caracal. Caracal is nice. We can do. We can. We can do the caracal. Uh, what is special about the caracal? Tell me on it. Tell me a couple of things about the caracal which are special. We know that it's the only creature, it's the only natural predator 
or the dung beetle too. Oh, we can do the dung beetle. So let's have a vote. It's going to be one of these two. Either Caracal, uh, which is the only natural predator of the assault rack, the, the electric... Uh, um, yeah, exactly. The electric, uh, the, the electric rats with the shiny fur. Or the dung beetle that makes huge, huge dung balls and rolls them on the ground. So uh, make, the, uh, make your vote. Cast your vote right now. The beetle exists. Yeah, but it doesn't have battle statistics. I'm going to tell you what I know about it from the session. It has some details already written. But, uh... So Sally votes for Caracal. Sally votes for the cat. Any other votes for the beetle or the cat? We're making both fast. <laughs> Caracal. Two votes, Caracal. Okay, two votes Caracal seems like that's what we chose, I think. And that's what that means. That's what we have. Any more lurkers want to join? By the way, I don't think there's many lurkers. Okay, so let's uh, let's write down the, the, the Caracal, which I'll, I start by writing Caracal with a K, because that's what we decided, but we're going to have a better punny name later on. Only natural... Predator of the assault rats. Rat. Um, <clears throat> so, what does it look like? Give me a physical description. Otherwise, docile. <laughs> Usually docile. I like that. Not all monsters, not all creatures have to be monsters, have to be like enemies. Looks super dangerous. So give me, give me a description. What looks dangerous about it? I love it. I love it that it looks like the most dangerous predator, but it's actually very cute and docile. Wallers, welcome back. Uh, we're making the Caracal, which is an idea we had before. It's gonna have another name uh, later on, but the placeholder right now is Caracal, uh, which we decided is the only natural predator of the assault rat we wrote before. Uh, it's usually docile, but looks super dangerous. So it's not actually going to be a dangerous enemy for the players, for the characters. Uh, but it is going to look super dangerous when you meet it. Huge teeth, claws, yellow, large ears, good sense of smell, shiny skin. So, um, uh, large, yellow, um, shiny, yellow, Skin. Uh, I didn't sleep very well at night at all, and I think it's now catching up to me. Uh, shiny yellow skin, uh, large ears, large, large teeth. Let's add something else that doesn't belong on a cat. Not something that doesn't belong on a cat at all. I wanted to have some feature that makes it even more dangerous. <clears throat> very long, cool. Very long is nice. Like uh, like a, a ferret proportions. Like it, it has a very long torso. Something that doesn't belong on a cat though. Something that really is out of place. Give me something out there. Something that doesn't belong on a cat and then we'll just, well, it needs to be something that poison tail. Actually, how does it, how does it hunt the rats, the, the assault rats? Okay, let's remind ourselves, these rats have long bodies, pointy noses, shiny, luxurious fur. Actually, they don't have long bodies anymore. <clears throat> they have long, pointy noses, shiny, luxurious fur, uh, two sets of teeth. They have one set of predatory teeth when they're in a swarm. They're often in a swarm. Okay, they're often in a swarm. And they, uh, they shock enemies with electricity, right? Salt-filled pouch, why does that help them? How, how does that help them uh, uh, hunt the rats? Oh. Huh. Okay, 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 okay. I like the salt-filled pouch. I think it um, it lures the rats 
by providing them with salt. <coughs> so that means it has uh, sharp salt crystals growing around its head. That's what it's going to have. Short, uh, sharp salt crystals like a a uh, 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 collar of sh of salt crystals going around and on and on its head like a uh, uh, collar and a crown right it's like a, a a lion's mane and a mane but they're, they're sharp salt crystals and it breaks them off against the ground and against rocks and it uh, it lures the rats to certain places by leaving these salt crystals behind. Uh, additionally, Sally is suggesting uh, insect wings, which are very cool as well. Insect wings. Nice. Okay, so it has insect wings and it has sharp salt crystals growing around and on its head like a lion's mane. Uh, oh, yeah, it flies above the puddles that the puddles that they uh, create a trap. Cool. Okay, cool. I like that. That's amazing. So, uh, usually docile, actually, um, uh, and uh, friendly. Unless it's hunting rats. <clears throat> I like that. I like that a lot. Okay. Um, that's uh, behavior. Um, so, um, hunts by breaking off salt crystals, leaving them behind as bait then uh, diving in from above to snatch salt rats one by one cool nice abilities what abilities does it have uh, it might not have a lot of uh, how by eating the rats so it gains some salt from the rats, yeah, but it has to gain salt from other locations, right? Other sources. So we need to have some, this desert, for minerals and rocks it consumes. It actually eats rocks. Nice. So eats, eats rocks, but not for nourishment, rather to, uh, um, consume to uh, uh, extract salt from them. Here's a cat. Here's a dangerous, usually docile, but often dangerous cat. It was indeed a cat. So it eats minerals and rocks, but not for nourishment, rather to extract salt from them. Usually docile and friendly, unless it, it's hunting rats. Uh, one, replenishes plastic fur. Gum rocks, remember it's plastic fur. It's fur is plastic? Plastic fur? We actually didn't say fur. We didn't even say that it's it's fur. You said it has. You said it has shiny yellow, shiny yellow skin, right? A liquid repellent fur. Yeah, it has. Oh yeah, it has like a um um plastic rubber yellow skin. Large, uh uh. Sh okay, shiny yellow, smooth skin. And uh, we'll write down here it is immune 
to lightning and electricity rubber skin it has a rubber skin yeah no it can't have fur fur would actually um uh can t like can actually get charged by electricity right if it's lots of small strands of fur even if it's made of plastic it doesn't matter it needs to have us to be a smooth a smooth um what's the opposite of conducting um uh, insulating insulating uh, material so that's cool that's uh it has a rubber yellow rubber skin okay what else what else do we know about the abilities that it has uh diving attack uh skilled at uh, diving and snatching prey it keeps cold with fat it is rather fatty <laughs> probably yeah okay let's write down the stats uh it needs to be a formidable creature so three hit dice Oh yeah, the salt can actually be a natural defense. It's a defense against uh, the the creatures who try to 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 eat this this one. Uh, you feel free to think of a name. We know enough things about it, and uh, you can um, you can start thinking of a name already. It is. It's weird, and I love it too. We, I really try to steer away from the most random things and just stay with things that are weird, but somehow it seems like they make sense under some kind of context that we just don't exactly know yet. For example, we don't know yet why is salt so important in this desert. Obviously, salt is important, like really important, but we don't know where it comes from, and we didn't decide it. It's fine. I think we're not going to know why salt is so important today maybe maybe we will somebody's gonna have a, a perfect idea uh are you thinking of a name we need a name for the creature has three attacks two claw attacks and one bite attack so it causes uh two uh six-sided dice and one eight-sided die of damage uh if you get hit by all three attacks which is quite a lot it's very um very good uh also it has a um um crystal salt crystal main which uh, deals 1d6 damage uh, to physical attackers. Silly Cat. Silly Cat is amazing. Salt and metal, the magical nexus of earth elements. Okay, interesting, interesting, silly cat. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, it's gonna be called silly cat. Cool. <coughs> uh, we'll also write down here that it's very, it's very skilled flyer with insect wings it's probably able to to hover in place and like zoom around and turn very quickly uh, uh and avoid okay so i think now we're ready to we're, we're ready to say we have enough monsters for today i think we've created enough uh i i'm gonna sally i'm gonna be with you in a minute i'm just i'm gonna i'm gonna draw this creature uh it needs to be a uh, yellow rubbery <laughs> smooth yellow uh, where's the yeah? I don't know if there's a good yellow in here. Um, well, let's try. Let's try. This is a good yellow. Jesus. 
Awful. Terrible. Try again. Try again. Not very good at drawing animals. My actual cat is in the litter box right now, giving me, probably trying to help me. No, 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 that's not a tail. It's not a cat's tail. Not a shape. What the hell? God damn it. Drawing in roll 20. Okay. This is more like a cat's tail. It's a dinosaur. It's not a cat, that's a dinosaur. Start with ears. Okay, this looks more like a cat. And then there's the back legs. My cat is protesting at the awful job I'm doing drawing this cat. Okay, so now there's going to be salt crystals, which also are going to be quite. They need to be. I mean, they're they're white. Let's do them like a pale blue. Looks like a, a feathery, a feathery mane, but we know the truth. We know the truth. We know this is actually an extremely dangerous. Okay, okay, not bad, not bad. Okay. Um, camouflage with fangs and sharp claws and a sharp mane that only hunts one thing. I like this so much. Doing noise very cat like and hunts other things like insects. Kind of sorry to ask. Didn't we say it would be long? Long long. Uh we did. I didn't write it down. I guess it could still be long. I can do something like this. Yep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Look at this. Uh it works. Long. <laughs> okay, now <clears throat> the insect wings. The insect wings are going to be a uh, uh, what color? What color? Um, maybe another blue. Another blue color. Looks like a leaf. The other wing. Okay. These are the insect wings. <clears throat> and this is the silly cat. Very silly. Extremely silly. Bring it down just a little bit. Needs to still be bigger than the assault rat. Hopefully let's like this. Okay, cool. Cool. Silly cat. Now we'll take both of these. Nope. Oh, these two. Oop. These two. Yeah. Down. Nice. Uh, okay. Oh, hey. We have the cat. I think uh, I think we should be ready to 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 wrap up 
for the night and because of that I want to uh, just um, write down one last thing which is not going to be an enemy it's not going to be a monster it's going to be a natural phenomena and this natural phenomena is going to be that thing that you started already to write about in chat that explains why salt has such an important an important presence in this desert or how come not why i mean it doesn't have to necessarily have a purpose it's just a natural thing but it creates the salt uh, and also maybe it creates the minerals you know the cat eats some uh minerals to create its uh um uh its uh crystal um main uh, salt crystal main uh and it has to cr to eat some other kind of silicate ma silicate materials so probably he eats the sand he can eat actually the sand and the silicone in the sand uh, forms like a rubbery a rubbery skin yeah it has to be something about the terrain the ground itself the materials there are very rich uh sometimes the wind when the wind creates a pile of sand that's concentrated in one place for some reason that sand becomes magical and uh, it becomes a smurm right which is just pure magic that is imbued within the sand so for some reason there's something very special about the sand in this desert. How about you tell me of something which is either either a natural phenomena, something that happens, like, you know, there could be, in our world, it could be like a thunderstorm and lightning hits a tree and then the tree becomes, gets split in half and it's like a weird charcoal tree. That's something weird that happens and, you know, in, you, you can see you can see remains of it. So in, in, this, in this desert, there's going to be, uh, a kind of an analog phenomena that happens or that could be there could be a location somewhere in the desert there's the secret of the desert like the the heart of the of the, the the magical salt rich sand that has silicone and all kinds of useful materials in it that all the other creatures eat and get sustained with um so Anybody has any idea of what that thing can be? <clears throat> Tornado likes stream what does that mean what does tornado like stream mean <clears throat> tornado like stream earth into several components oh nice magic wind between the major elements maybe there's a huge tornado like stream or you mean did you mean storm or stream like it moves it's the turn like a storm that that moves and it splits earth into several components i like that i like it it's like an elemental storm it's an elemental storm, and it splits sand, which is useless, into different components. And then the, the, the desert... <gasps> wow! Like an ocean stream. Okay. Um, tornado. It's almost like it's a constant tornado. Like there's a tornado across the desert all the time. I think it should be something that happens that moves. It moves around. If you, if you said tornado then it, it's like a tornado that moves, an actual tornado that moves around along the desert, around the desert, and wherever it goes, behind it, there's dunes of separated material. The sand becomes separated into different kinds of materials, right? I think that's what it is. A feature of magic, magical climate. Yeah, yeah, it, it is, it's a magical climate. Uh, tornado storm moves through the desert. The uh, tornado separates separates things into dif different elements wherever it passes. Uh, behind it, there are dunes of different materials. Quartz, uh, silicate, 
Oh, cat. Um, salt and others. Magical residue from an ancient battle. I like that. An ancient battle, but he... An ancient king used it to power their magic, but he died and the great stream remained. Oh, that's also cool. A huge monsoon level thing. Huge monsoon level. Okay, so it's not a tornado. A huge storm. Um, a huge storm moves through the desert. Just a huge storm. The storm passes quickly and separates things into different elements. Whatever it passes behind it, there are dunes of different materials, Quasio gets all and others, makes these tornadoes. More of a monsoon level. I think one storm is enough. <laughs> There's a storm, it makes different tornadoes. It's, it's too complicated. Just one storm is very cool, and then they'll be able to see the storm coming. Now, when the storm hits a living thing, I don't know what happens. Does it destroy the living thing and separates that into materials as well? I don't know. Um, oh god, I have something. I have a lot to say about that, but some of it is going to be actual like spoilers for the game. Um, uh, the I like the idea of like an ancient king or an ancient battle. Something happened. Let's combine these two ideas. An ancient <clears throat> kingdom in the desert created this. Um, actually, you know what? That doesn't really fit. It doesn't really fit with other things. I'll say now what I want to say before, because actually now it's relevant. This idea of the storm that separates things into uh, different materials. Momo? By, by uh, Michael Ende? I remember something like this from another book, but I won't say which because it's also a spoiler. Um, I, I think that um, the... Uh, <laughs> cool, I don't remember anything like that. Um, the, okay, what I'm thinking of right now is that this actually really ties in very well to some things that I, I think about when I think about the setting of Yelp lore. Um, there's some secrets of the setting that are very far away in the future. Uh, some very basic things around the world that are undiscovered yet. Bye, cat. <clears throat> and this thing really ties into them really well. So I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm going to leave it at that. And I'm just going to say this is a feature of the desert. One last thing I want to say, I'm not going to draw this because it's just a storm. There's nothing to draw, really. But I, I mean, if you're a better painter, maybe you can draw this, but I don't. I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you because you, um, first of all, you can also watch and enjoy. And secondly, I don't know if my, maybe my players, some of them will watch this thing. Right. Still, still behave doesn't want any spoilers. And I think they're in the right. Um... Just that one last thing. Uh, I'm not going to draw this. I'm going to ask you if you want to make up a name for the storm. If you want to make up a name, it can be something epic. Uh, it can be something weird, something sinister. The dry monsoon, not bad. The dry monsoon is not bad. Hmm. <laughs> Sally, if we uh if you wanna hit me up in private, I'm gonna I'm gonna spoil you. I'll tell you the secret if you want to. I, I don't know, maybe. I'll think about it. I might want to keep it a secret just to myself. Um The Dry Monsoon is a good start. Anything else? Great magical rift. Nice. But I think a little too, too general. The dry monsoon is nice. Passes quickly and separates things in different elements. Uh, separate things that it, uh, 
um, the cupboards, cupboards, everything uh, caught in it into different elements. Wherever it passed, or rather in its wake, there are dunes of different materials. Okay. The central stram, the central earth stram, the dry elemental monsoon, the dry elemental monsoon, that's also cool. Mm, mystical magic monsoon. <laughs> <laughs> or the big M, as the locals call it. Oh god, it's the big M. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'll think about these suggestions for a name. I'll, I'll, I might choose one later on, I might not. I'll just leave it with the dry monsoon, which is cool. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, and, um, mm, yes, exactly. And we'll, uh, we'll convene at a later time to write more fucked up monsters for other areas of the world. There's going to be a map soon. Uh, I'm going to commission a map for Yelpalor, which means that next time we write monsters, we'll be able to actually see the different areas of the kingdom and see where we're writing monsters, uh, for. And it's, um... It's on Mondays. Uh, there was supposed to be a session today, and it's always on 8.30 Israel time, 7.30 uh, uh, Central European time. Uh, but uh, there wasn't today because of Easter. Uh, so some of the players couldn't make it, so uh, we took a week break for the holidays. Uh, but uh, next week we're going to be back, so every Monday night. So Sally, as I said before, if, you, uh, if one of your sessions um, gets cancelled again, <laughs> you can always come watch. Uh, Questers of Yalpalor. It's a really fun game. Yeah, world building is fun. It's a whole lot of fun. And you helped a lot. I mean, the ideas you came up with is something that I would, would have never been able to write on my own. Uh, it really is amazing. Um, I, uh, I want to uh, say thank you to uh, Sally, to Sit Still Behave, It'll change the day. Oh, cool. So feel free to join us on Mondays then and bring all your players as well. Bring them all to watch us play Questers of Yalpalor. It's going to be a while before they get to the desert. Don't expect these awesome things to, to happen right now. The desert is going to just stay in the background for a while uh, because they're now they're, they're busy with other things. But Sally, if you make it, it's going to be awesome. Um, uh, we, we'd really love to see you there. Uh, and bring everyone, <laughs> bring all your friends. We need some more viewers. Uh, and um, uh, so thank you, the two of you, Sister Behave and Sally. Thank you, Trina Boy, for helping. Uh, thank you, uh, what was what was the name? Uh, uh, Slap Bass Walrus also helped for a while. Uh, so thank you as well. Uh, and anyone else who watched, who lurked, uh, anyone who uh, thinks that this is cool and wants to come watch Questers, you're welcome to do that. Uh, anyone who hasn't followed us yet, follow and subscribe. It will be a great help to the channel. Uh, and uh, we'll see you next time. So every Monday night, 8.30 Israel time, it's uh, Questers of the Alphalore. Uh 8.30 Israel time on Saturday nights, same hour on Saturdays. I uh, play, I run... Um, uh, the sorcery game books to you. So I'm the game master, you're the hero, and you play throughout the adventure. You make all the choices. Uh, that's it. Till next time. Have a good night. <laughs> yes. That's right, Sally. Uh, Miss, Mrs. Daisy McGilligully, our hero, uh, which you play on Saturday nights, traveling through Kakabad in order to gain the crown of kings. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. Till next time, play hard and stay safe. Have a good night. See you later.